I don't want you being one of those gangsters boys. All right, we're on. I still need to set up my camera, though. We are live, 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 live. I I downloaded all the video that I could from from last episode and combined them all and put it on YouTube. Nice. It's still live. Definitely. It's still uh, we we're, we were pushing your computer to limit on that last one for sure. I don't know what the difference was between that and uh, Al Gofa's stream, though, because it was the same setup. I don't know what yeah, was the difference. Yeah, you're not wrong, because the double one you guys were trying to share a screen. Like, oh, no, uh, Gofa's. That you were drawing on together. Gofa's was the same. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was about to say. Like, Gofa's was the same, because he had his own camera. Um... I'm not gonna lie, Kevin had a really nice setup, so maybe I don't want his you being one of those games everything is, boys. was like taking more to run, maybe because like his quality was really nice, like so. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I was able to finish pencils for this new page. That's what I like to hear. It was cool watching him ink, though. Oh, dude, it's as much as he could. For sure, like he's he's incredible like he is very good at what he does and it was exciting watching him ink and see what his process was it's a good page to ink too to show I don't want you being one of those gangsters today? boys. Yeah, 47. Jay's walking Dude, through so the close. alley. Yeah. You're fucking... Well, you're now less than 20 pages. And I'm assuming the last couple of pages you'll be able to burn through a little bit faster just due to, like, they're not very, like, focused on, like, background and stuff like that. So, definitely think... uh you're about to draw more of, I think, what you really want to draw. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. So, Let's see. Don't sound too excited. So I'm looking at the scripts. Looking <laughs> at the, I'm like trying to read and listen at the same time. I am I am very appreciative of the amount of work you put into this. I know it's probably very exhausting on your end, but I want you to know. I love I love every moment of it. It is, but I you know I also procrastinate, so I also put it put it on myself. And you know that I'm not. This is I'm, this is like one of the one of the things that I'm also working on. Mm. And I I'm constantly thinking of all the projects, but then what am I really doing? I'm watching a podcast on YouTube. Mm. Well, well, that's why the whole stream exists. You know what I mean? Because it. it basically it's set up a schedule for you to like try i don't to want you being one to, of those gangsters you know? boys because it is very e especially when it's your own project it's very easy to just kind of put it on the back burner and focus more on like what's pulling in money right now right this second so i definitely yeah. feel that but there's also two other projects that 
<laughs> that are potential potential Kickstarters. So I was like, mm -hmm. it's not making any money right now. Yeah. I just printed out my pages for TMNT to look yeah, over that. Say, that. That's one of them. That's one of the other projects that is going to... Luckily, it's only two pages, but also that means that you have to like do those two pages justice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was looking at it and also trying to figure out like how do I... How much can I... How much should I change? What can I change? Yeah, I was going to ask you, are you going to try to reinvent the wheel or are you just going to take the same layout and stuff? You're going you're gonna to change I'm gonna change. I'm going to change the layout. Um, the pages I have, they're both six panels each. So I could take the simple route and do it old school way where it's just a six panel grid layout and then mm -hmm. um, try to make everything in each panel since it's a boring simple layout how do you, you now you, it's more open to make the stuff in the in, in the inside of the panel like even more exciting or do i really like um utilize different I don't want you being one of those boys. to accentuate what's going on in, in the um in the story I, I have a fight scene both pages are a fight scene so like oh fuck yeah fuck yeah can I make it look manga? Cool yeah, diagonal panels. What could I do? Yeah, um, I hear you, man. I This weekend, I'm going to try to finish storyboarding the story I'm trying to do with Soba and send him the first draft. And then I've already kind of loosely started talking. To, I want to do something with Kevin, too. So um, hopefully I can figure something out with him um the the cool thing about his whole space night series is you know how you mentioned eventually he would like other writers and other artists to, like come in um and do their own like little short stories and stuff i think i might try to uh sneak in that way maybe i can get into like his next zine or something maybe not the first not like an official um. space nights comic but maybe i can get into like uh do my own little short story somewhere or something like that yeah that would be cool Oh shit, yeah, let me try. Yeah, I, I got interested when he mentioned that too. It's like, ooh, I want to draw something. Yeah. I don't want you be. Yeah, maybe uh, we can convince him to do a Angry, uh, angry Warrior one shot. And then maybe you and me both can do our own thing for Space Knights. Maybe I write a story, and then maybe you get to write and draw your own story as well. Mm -hmm. cool. I definitely want to see more of your writing, for sure. I'd like to see more stuff where you get to... I want to see how your brain works, because we've talked about stuff that you've planned in the past, for sure. It just takes time. I can't... It does. It takes a lot of time, and that's why I like being the writer. Because, to be honest, like... It's it's work. You you know you got to try to find something interesting or compelling, but at least that's where it ends with me. And then the real to me the real time consuming part is obviously the the drawing, like what you're doing right now. Like so, I can brainstorm on something in a week and be like, oh wow, like that sounds cool or that sounds interesting. But for you to like fully draw that and envision that, that's that's way lengthier. Jesse's in his house. Hey, Jesse, what's up? I'm still trying to figure out ways to, uh, um, the, the layouts that I've been doing, it's, pretty for the most part uh simple layouts mm -hmm. even though still i'm like thinking about like how big certain things should be but since we have this uh um the the guides i can just rely on that to um mm -hmm. alleviate how big certain panels should be but then i'm just realizing that there was that fight scene where jay was knocking out 
was his name? The dealer. What's his name again? Oh. Oops, not this. But there was like some diagonal lines during the headbutt scene and the punch in the face scene. It's like, yeah, okay, well, definitely. Um, you, I know we want to get a little yeah. more wild with like the layout and. Uh, definitely this first issue is a bit more traditional like we've we've already talked about some of the stuff we want to experiment with the uh, oh, right. the next issue right. but um but yeah i'm not gonna lie after reading space nights and seeing kind of kevin's format like when you're showing us his like sci-fi and he, some of the weirder more interesting like kind of chaotic layouts he was doing it made me go like damn i need to start getting a little more adventurous with the way i'm doing things too yeah Jesse's saying he got a painting framed for my grandparents. It came out real nice. Uh, real busy at work today. Dot, 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 not. <laughs> Sounds like he's chilling. His work is paying him to watch this. Yeah. That's kind of a cool way to think about it. You're getting paid right now to uh, support us. You should maybe split some of that income towards us by uh, subscribing. Just kidding. We got another subscriber. I know, like you turned a broken I, ass stream. I want to tell everybody to stop. So doing fucking that. broken. Like, the quality that we that was a worse stream. Subscription worthy. Who subscribed? Was it just a stranger, or was it somebody else? <laughs> no, I, it's someone. Oh, you know, oh, I know who it is. It's uh, it's Enki. Oh, he's just, but he's a friend. He probably didn't even watch it last week. Yeah, no, he that was his pity. But if you did, thank you. I recognize the name now. We did get a follow twenty hours ago by Paco X Bell. Hell yeah. The legend. Anki's also part of the TMNT Remix project. I think some people still don't understand the, the concept of the... Oh, shit, I almost spoiled it. But some people don't understand that concept that I'm not going to explain. <laughs> Idiots. How do they not get the thing that I'm not willing to get into detail about? I told you what, what I wanted, right? How, the approach of it. For the TMNT? Yeah. Yes. I don't I think, think I was there when we were all kind of just like what something like that could potentially be, you know? Yeah, I don't think anybody's done this. Done it the way. I'm thinking of. Jesse said, shout him out. Every subscriber gets a freestyle rap by Warwick. Oh, yeah. We need a. And Jesse send Warwick the uh the music link so he can get an instrument. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can do some over. bars. Oh this this page I decided to eliminate one panel and combine it with uh with the last panel. Cause there was a shot. Of... Yeah, is it the? Oh wait, no. So you have the unwrapping. I see the the sm the two smaller panels. This is I'm unwrapping yeah. the candy bar, and then I'm guessing the larger one on the bottom is him going in for a bite. Yeah. Jay Could... is a very uh, handsome young man. Very appreciative of that. Yeah, I try to make him handsome. Yeah. Even with the bruises. It would have been difficult to pitch this with an ugly uh, protagonist, I think. That would be a challenge. I wanted to see how that would play out if someone were to do something. Well, like, uh, the only one I can think of is, remember that comic, The Freak, written by... Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not even going to say his last name. It's Matt something. Um, Lesniewski? I say Lesniewski. I don't know if that's Lesniewski. even right. Yeah. Um. But his his that entire comic was focused on the fact that he was ugly. So I think that's that's how he made it work. But if he had just made a comic book with a very unappealing protagonist, and then it's like never really addressed or brought up, 
then I think people would be like, oh, I wonder, wonder why they chose that. Yeah, if you're gonna do that, you gotta give that character like a real authentic charm. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you've ever noticed the trope where they'll make someone really handsome and a total piece of shit too. I feel like that yeah. happens a lot. Yeah, because that's a subverting expectations. Yeah, like you you see someone beautiful and they're completely evil and fucked up inside. It even works backwards too. There's, I forgot. I think it's like a, a Jack Black movie where the lady was fat and then she got skinny and then everybody liked her and then she was like, she became good because she got skinny. Some shit like that. <laughs> you, you talking about Shallow How? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> That's the one. Is that what happened? That's what I thought. No, it's not I what happened. Watch it, so. no. <laughs> The the premise of the movie is Hal, who's Jack Black, is very shallow, and so like a spell is cast on him. So now he sees people, uh, he, people reflected by their inner beauty. So he sees them how attractive they are as they are in the inside. So he sees this skinny, beautiful woman, oh. but really she's like large and like not, I guess, what you would consider traditionally <laughs> like beautiful, and um. All of his friends are like, bro, what are you doing? And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? She's like the most gorgeous thing in the world. And it's because <laughs> he sees her as like as more than just like a physical thing. And um, yeah, like hence the the title, Shallow, Shallow yeah. Hell. Um, Jesse's asking, how do you get those gutters so even? Gutters so even? Even um, I'm using the the guide. I blue lined, or I faintly printed out the the guide. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, did you see that tool that Jason was using? It was like a stencil for panel layouts. I think it was a trip. No, the his his video was choppy on, on my side. Oh, was it? Yeah, it was choppy and it was lagging. So, like, whenever no, he was showing stuff and not, then you were reacting to it, like, wow, Kevin, that's Jason, cool. Jason, Jason. Jason. Oh, so, that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did yeah, see that. Yeah, he has, like, I remember he posted it on his, like, Instagram or something like that. And it was, like, a three panel segment, like, yeah. cutout that you just lay onto the page and you can just trace it. And, like, I was like, damn, that's pretty trippy. Yeah. I think he got I'm, that from some from someone at ink and drink yeah he like he shouted out somebody he thanks somebody um Raphael. Raphael. sorry if i uh i was talking to kevin too much i was stealing him oh I no i mean i was drawing prison, so so it's hard for me to draw and talk that's why you're here yeah i had a really good time i uh i messaged him basically saying if he ever wants to come back on or promote or anything obviously just reach out like we're always down so yeah on the uh oh, damn it. on the uh youtube upload of the of the all the such videos i made sure to put his link tree Oop. yeah i gotta make one of those i need to make a link tree and then i'll just link the angriest warrior on your website and then um Probably the stream, obviously, and then hopefully the Kickstarter eventually when we release file. Yeah, it's always brand new shit. You gotta like fucking. Yeah, I, I think that's why like I've been avoiding it, but obviously I need to kind of pull my weight for the marketing side. And it, and it, it doesn't end work. Like you have the link tree up, and you have all your links up, even your own <laughs> personal links, and you think you're good. And then you have like the new book out. There's a link for that, and then there's a new book. So then you gotta make a brand new link. Yeah, I gotta go back to link tree, log in, un unless you're already logged in, and then make a link for that. Then you have so, to like reorder or whatever. Blah, 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 blah. I still need to write um, nine more pages for that first draft before I send it off to Soba and I have a lot of things I need to do in those nine pages 
and I might have to up the page count by four, which I really don't want to do because it's at 48 right now. Um, but if the pacing doesn't feel right, then I'm going to have to add those four. But what I'm hoping is when I pass it over to Sova and he reads it, he'll be able to, um, further condense. Cause this is the first draft, you know what I mean? So maybe, uh, there's some scenes that we can condense. Definitely. Um, I, I went slow on some of the hauntings, Oof. but I think that that's obviously intentional. Cause like I'm trying to build suspense, but the, in those nine pages, there's a lot that needs to happen, and I'm worried it's just going to feel like it's like on fast forward. You're you're giving him the the choice to edit down stuff, then. Yeah, because that's that's what you do too. You remember, like, yeah, yeah, you'll yeah. you'll you'll put this panels one. together and stuff like that. I, yeah. I have no problem with like you guys my work as long as I feel like it it doesn't compromise like what that page is supposed to be getting across you know what i mean like uh yeah like i i don't ever want to be one of those writers that's like no like you have to do it the way i, I put it down like i I always want to be willing to make changes and make this easier but also make this like make more sense because maybe I, maybe i over explained a scene like maybe a scene doesn't need to be four pages maybe we can get all the information done in three you know yeah so yeah sobo is gonna be a good i think sobo will have like a better grasp of of doing that because mm-hmm. i'm kind of still learning too and i mean some stuff i think it's like kind of obvious and i don't really edit a lot a lot maybe the english warrior was more i feel like i'm kind of weird too though because like i I don't like people just showing up to the next location. Like I need some movement like, Oh, they're walking. You know what I mean? So it's like, maybe that's just a me issue and that isn't a big deal, but I'm not a fan of, of characters just ending up somewhere new. Like in this comic, there's literally a page where somebody's following a noise and they walk past like the silhouette of the shadow of like a door frame, but then the sound and then panel beneath it, comes out of that door frame they just walked past so they freeze and like kind of turn back and then the panel underneath that is them about to enter that door frame so obviously that's a lot of like almost a repetitive shot but it's part of that scene where i feel like i'm building suspense so um it's it's just a weird like balancing act of trying to figure out like what is necessary and like what isn't yeah really because normally I'd be like, uh, maybe that's a little too much. But the fact that that scene is supposed to be slow, I feel like it works. But I could be wrong. Yeah, I guess you you don't know unless you try it. Exactly. I'll send it to you too when I when I send it out to Sobo. I'll send it, and you can. I would love to hear your feedback on it as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to reading it. I uh, in this first draft, there's no real dialogue. It's kind of just me explaining like what's happening in the panels and what it looks like in the panels and like what, like if there is going to be dialogue, I basically put like this is what the dialogue is going to genuinely be about, you know. So I'm not I'm not worried about words right now. Yeah, Jesse's saying, I think intention has a lot to do with it. Knowing it's jarring to pop in characters, but if that's your intent. Yeah, yeah. so that a great example of that is when Jay, in this comic, falls asleep, and then all of a sudden he opens his eyes open again, and he's like in a hospital. That's very jarring, right? Yeah. And it's because he's in a nightmare. So it's like, it's very like, oh, fuck, like how I'm here, like how do you know, I, I agree heavily with that, Jesse, and I think that's something I need to explore more. Because I think I have this weird uh, condition where I feel like I need to let time pass before things happen. So, like, after he wakes up from that nightmare, 
he begins to cry, but then there's literally a whole panel that's just black. It's just solid black. And then the panel underneath that is him in front of a liquor store. And having that solid black panel to me gives the reader like space, like it's a pause, like, oh, like it's, it's, you know, and scene like the lights dim. And then all of a sudden, like you're in a new location, a new set. And it doesn't feel as jarring because it isn't just an abrupt like, oh, you're here now. It's it's yeah. a, like, oh, there's there's a pause. You I'll know? pull that page so. out. And uh, the the ghost comment that I'm writing has pages like that, too, because after you have like a very climatic experience, like you can't just go to the next thing like it, there needs to be like a bit of like, OK, like, you know, to me, horror is very like you need to have breaks. Otherwise, if you just have everything back to back, it's not it's not impactful. But yeah, literally just a solid black panel and then ding dong. Even um, the the shape of the black panel, the width, or not the width, the uh, the height is similar to the width of the ding dong panel. The mm. the ding dong panel is slightly bigger, which then I am hoping suggests that um, it it's a lead in a. a yeah, I guess, yeah, a lead into the next scene. Yeah. Just a bigger shot of Jay, crowded. Now he's with people. The last panel we saw him in, he's just by himself. So that's like a contrast right there. And then you highlight the, uh, the lotto ticket. So good. I like seeing the uh, uh, Kevin's graffiti stuff. He has a oh, yeah. chocolate. He has a candy bar in his thing too. Yeah. It's almost upsetting how good he is. Yeah. Uh... It's funny because that's what Sobo was doing with me when I was pitching him the story. He was like, when he found out he was older than me by a couple of years, he was very like, he was like, man, I wish I was doing what you were doing, what you're doing at, at you know, your age. And Kevin gave me that because Kevin is even, I believe, a few years younger than me. And he's yeah. a fucking animal. So... That's fucking wild. I'm looking up dress shoes. Four. You gotta go Italian made at least, I would say, 1920s era. Alright, let me look that up. There's a certain, there's some bum in this alley that I need to get some shoes for. I don't know who the fuck this guy is. You go with some classic Oxfords. Yeah, that's the one. That is indeed the one. Show me. Are we still numbering the glass tube? Oh yeah, did I number the last one? No, remember, because the last one is SOL. So the one coming up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We can name. We can. Yeah. Do you have a number? 
Uh, I've always liked zero zero nine, but how do you how do you feel? Oh, Is there? I'll put that. Yeah, you like that one. It's better than double oh seven. <laughs> I also think uh, in the script I put there's a specific number and graffiti tag that should be on the wall behind him too. Oh, you did? Let me see. Pretty sure I did. Did you did you print it out the like the newer version? Like it, I haven't edited it recently, but I'm just saying because remember you had the older script that you yeah, were physically holding. Did one. you? You have the new one? Okay. Only I'm looking at the script right now. Yeah, you're good. I figured. Um, I don't know if I have to open. Are you refer? What page are you referring to? Is that page fifty-two? Let me uh, let me look it up really quick. Oh, I. Th are you referring to a numerical reference from a specific from book? a book? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That that's. Is, I, I have that's that. going to be the graffiti. Yeah, that's going to be the graffiti. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because that's a little fun tidbit if people look that up. Okay. Um, it's not graffiti in this script. It's something else. Oh, okay. Damn, I did it. Damn, I did it like that. Interesting. Sorry, it's been a minute since I've I've reread this script. Uh yeah, it, it works either way. I'm cool with doing it in that. Uh, yeah, let's keep it to, to what you had in the script because I think it 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 ties closer How about you to the, the word the word in graffiti above, but then the watch. Because now it's it's double it's double okay. layer. You know what I mean. And that word, I th uh, that word, I think we're gonna cut it off. Okay. So, you know, it's so it's just you. so yeah. it's not too on the nose. Like if you're reading the background, then you know what that is. But Leave we're not just spelling enough. it out to yeah, you. Yeah. So somebody's like who who's a little more on it. But yeah, yeah I, I liked that. I think it's a cool reference for what's to come, right? Yeah, I think so. I like explaining stuff to the audience that doesn't know what we're talking about. I hate doing that, but we always have to do that. <laughs> oh, here's the shoes. If you want to see. Let's see if I can match them. Yeah, because you remember when we first started... Um writing this there was a lot of religious tones and there's still there's still like a tinge of it but it's definitely not as heavily in that direction yeah it is fun to play with though because it's so iconic rooted yeah it's iconic yeah like uh and everybody does it. Like you look at like Nausicaa. Um, she literally, she's like prophesized as like a messiah. Like literally the beginning of that film. Uh, yeah. You just see the etchings and you see a, a winged woman. That's basically like an angel. And then you get the next clip is her flying on a glider. And then um, the end of the movie when she jumps in front of the bugs to try to stop them and she she dies she gets killed and then she's resurrected you know what i mean so yeah. definitely and that was a really interesting choice because uh most of his uh work is it's very religious but it's rooted i believe in the shinto religion which is more of like the japanese like everything has a spirit everything has like mm -hmm. a purpose and that film, Nausicaa, definitely was more rooted in like Christianity belief and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think they view uh, other religions 
similar to each other where mm -hmm. i mean obviously they don't have christianity is not strong in that culture so they yeah. treat everything else like it's the same way we treat uh the greek mythology or egyptian mythology mm -hmm. i think that's how they also treat christian <laughs> It's yeah, almost it's like a mythology. It's fun to look at and yeah. read about, but it's but that's kind of where it ends for them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like, and even I I think Shinto religion, like I, if I remember correctly, I, I read somewhere that Japan is one of the least religious places in the world. Like, oh. they they do like funerals and stuff like that. That's and they do some of the same rituals and rites as. Um, fucking uh as Bud buddhism but my buddy from japan said nobody is actually like buddhist though like they're very rare and far between between it's more of just like tradition like oh this is the way we, we bury the dead and it's not necessarily like we're doing this for religious purposes um but yeah uh jesse saying damn i'm being assaulted by like 10 ads what did i do to deserve this good take it it's because you're not... Oh, he can't hear us. Because he's not subscribed. <laughs> the, the small window <laughs> doesn't do uh, cl closed caption. Then no, it wouldn't do that. Why would it? No, there's no way. He'll just have to rewatch the video. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shoes is hard to draw. I wonder if Kevin has a hard time drawing shoes. I hope he does. <laughs> I hope he, he could never draw a pair to save his life. He is exciting to watch, though. Just to know how old he is and what, you know, like what he's capable of doing. Do, do you imagine Just imagine he's like 40, yeah, 50. Yeah, you know that's what I, mean? I was, like, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. I'll be 42. Imagine him being 42. What's, what, what, how is he approaching? He's probably going to surpass every... He's already come to his own with his style, but just imagine that developed even further. All we can hope for is he just gives up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just write the first, uh, write the first three issues for him and then just stop. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to ruin it, but I already have an idea of something I want to do for that world. But um and it won't mess with his lore or anything like that. But I'll, I'll tell you about it later when we're off. Oh yeah. Yeah, mine is just basically just fighting. <laughs> I so I don't mind telling that one cuz I so when I first before I even was like, "Oh, I I want to do something with him." I already had like an idea and um, it wasn't until we did the stream that he mentioned that he wanted a bit more of like mystery and stuff like that, that I was oh, like, man, yeah, I should, yeah. I should do something like that. I should focus on, cause I, I, I love noir esque. you know, I'm a big fan of Hellboy, but I've never really attempted writing anything like that. So part of me was like, maybe I should, I should give that a swing and I kind of have an interesting hook like angle. But um, I'm not sure if that's the direction I'll fully go. But um, for the fighting one, before I even talked to him, I had this idea a while back where it was like you have this like very old school hamlet, like stone buildings. It looks very medieval. It's very like not as high sci-fi sci as some of the stuff he's he's been doing, but it's it's definitely more like medieval looking. And you have this like monk who's like doing his nightly prayers. There's a storm going on outside and he's in a tower and he's putting out the candles. And as he's looking outside into the storm, you just have a lightning strike and you see the silhouette of this massive, like two headed, like dragon in the sky. And in a panic, he like runs up this bell tower, starts ringing this bell in the dead of night. And it alerts the whole town that there's a dragon and basically you you have one guy suit up into a fucking like sick ass like mech gundam knight looking robot and you just have this epic fight between him and a two-headed dragon 
So, and that was going to be like the pitch for that action you thing. But then after hearing that he's looking for more of like mystery and like something a little more interesting in that sense, I was like, oh, cool. I should, I should try to do that if that's what he's looking for. Because even if he doesn't like it or want to go with it, it's just a good exercise to just write. Because that's not yeah. something I would have gone out of my way to write. So maybe, maybe I'll write a horrible story, uh, but at least. I have like attempted and put thought into it, you know? Exactly. Yeah, that is a good, yeah. That's how I like to treat everything that I do as an exercise. Oh, Jesse did hear what I said. Well, just imagine what I, what you didn't get to hear. <laughs> we said some really good stuff when you were gone. Yeah. Sucks. I'll let him, I'll let one thing, I'll, I'll let him know one thing that, that I said, his farts smell like roses. <laughs> the most beautiful rose. But yeah, I I genuinely really liked uh, reading Space Nights because I'll be honest, I had I bought it because obviously I'm a big fan of Kevin's work. But like with many other comic books, I have it just ended up collecting dust for like a month or two because I've just been busy. I put it. I don't know if you do what I do, but as soon as a comic comes in, I put it on the bookshelf, which is a bad thing. Oh, I look at it for five minutes, like, and then I put it away. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I put it away, though it's not like in my immediate field of vision. And unless it's something that like I've been dying to check out, it it doesn't really cross my mind. And having Kevin on gave me the reason to go like, oh fuck, I need to read both the zine and the comic book. And I laid down to read it, and I was I was very pleasantly surprised of what i got oh yeah same my thoughts exactly i mean even especially the uh the the zine because yeah both both were good like i remember how i told you the zine felt so fucking raw it felt yeah. way more like the tone of it was so much different than the uh the actual like anthology collection in the first volume um, Jesse saying, I got to watch Kevin's interview. I wasn't able to watch it live. Yeah. Nobody was, it, uh, it, it tanked. <laughs> yeah. like nobody got to watch it live. It was shit. Ended- it's, it's on YouTube though. I stitched it all on YouTube, but even still it's, it's more audio than visual. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to treat it that way. If you're going to yeah. listen to that, you got to go be doing something. You could like draw yourself <laughs> or do some, do your chores. We got to start thinking what's like the next move for after you're getting close to finishing inking vial. Like, you know, we like, how do you, how do you think you want to navigate all of this? Do you want to just send it out to a bunch of people and then just wait a, a few weeks or, you know what I mean? Like. Send it out to, to who, to reviewers. Yeah, to people to like hopefully get the word out and oh, uh, um, stuff like that. Like, yeah, like I'm not really sure what's what's the game plan with this, you know? Yeah, we could do that. Um, if we're doing that, then I would say it would be safe to do that a month before the launch. Yeah, because yeah, um, ideally, I would like hmm. the reviews, and if we end up doing interviews and stuff, to be coming out during the actual campaign. Because right. then hopefully it gives oh, the incentive fuck. of people who just heard about it the option to opt in it right then and there. Because I don't want stuff to come out two months before the campaign, and everybody who was genuinely interested in that moment has already like forgotten about it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Thinking one month ahead would be relatively reasonable because even still, if we do those 
uh, interviews or podcasts, they have their own schedules. So I don't know where our episode will show up mm-hmm. after we record those individual shows. Yeah, hopefully the people we end up interviewing with, we can tell them like, hey, is there any way like maybe they don't have a lot of content, but maybe there's a way we could tell them like, is there any way you could, if you're going to upload this, can you wait a month or can you wait three weeks or whatever to better align with our release date? Yeah. Art of Tech. Uh, Caustic just came in here too. Oh, what's up, Art of Caustic? Mr. James, man, I miss seeing your posts. You're you're off my algorithm again. So I have to go look at what you've done. You know, let's just go check out what he's done on Instagram. Um, you know, I was just also thinking that we had. I mean, although we're not booked up or anything, but we had uh, Al Gofo reached out during the campaign and we accommodated him as well as comic cave also accommodated el gofa mm-hmm. so maybe we could uh reach out maybe that still might be an option if we could like reach out to uh sh- two people during the campaign and then have like schedule something the week after or or that week of mm-hmm. to record something and then have them upload it as quickly as they can i think i think uh what you said earlier is the better plan where it's like just we do everything a month in advance and we just either ask them to hold on to the episode until we've released the campaign oh i see yeah Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it's like the content's already there because i do worry because like what if stuff happens and they're not able to edit or do whatever they want to do and you know what i mean then we we've potentially done an interview that will come out after uh, it's already closed. You know, that's just my general thoughts on it. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. That, that, that works out too. There might be like, like the heavy hitter guys, like the big popular guys. Maybe yeah. We hit them the, first. The, those are the ones that probably have schedules and they already have like 10 in the roster already like being edited. You know what I mean? So yeah. Then I ended up then, backing that hmm. other comic that uh, Al was talking about, um, Death Transit Tanger. Oh, that called Crucial. Yes. Um, I was already hooked when he said, "Oh, it's basically like a like a manga style of like Super Metroid," and I was like, "Uh, yeah, okay, I like both of those things." And the art's phenomenal. I've never I've never seen this guy's work, but the art, the art is good. very good. Yeah. Yeah, the tagline is a young woman with a strange gift travels the galaxy to help lost souls find their way home in this new sci-fi comic series. Like that's that's a cool hook. I'm that interested. Good, good log line. Very good. Like imagine how fucked ghosts in space are. Like all the horrible things that probably happen to you in space and you're just floating through the abyss. No, it sounds scary. Art of Classic says, I haven't been posting in a while. I'm very busy with Kickstarter fulfillment. Um, he says, I'm not gone, just busy with not much time for social media. Oh, okay. That's good. It's probably a nice break, but I imagine the stress of doing fulfillment isn't a very fun uh, thing either. Hi, 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 Kickstarter fulfillment. I just figured out, there's like a few things I figured out with fulfillment two things well three things uh one is that um some people don't answer their survey and yeah. i don't have their address so i'm sitting on three rewards still on top of the printer um, another one is uh packing these orders i think with the uh priority padded envelope i can just pack it in i can use a uh, regular 
cardboard envelope 9x12, put the book inside that, and then put that into the padded envelope. And I think that's good enough. What I've been doing with all these books, Warwick, including mm -hmm. yours, is that I wrapped cardboard around it and taped that. Yeah, I remember. I don't it, have to do are that. You, oh, you don't? Well, yeah. But, like, I, I like it because you're guaranteeing that that comic is going to arrive as safely as it can. Oh, yeah. But instead of instead of the cardboard, I can just put it inside inside a, a hard envelope. You know, the hard mm -hmm. compressed cardboard type deal thingy? Like, uh, what is it? Yeah, I'm hoping we can, we can avoid like fulfillment this. with this. Hopefully that works out because otherwise I'll probably just take a few days off work and I'll just come over to your place and or you can come over to my place and we can just fucking crank through and then yeah that would be great and then with shipping i could uh i figured what i did do in the beginning is that i would um that was so stupid because i printed out the the list of all yeah, the backers like labels and stuff like that no no just the list from kickstarter <clears throat> But I had so all the, just... I had everyone's information, but this is the dumb thing that I did. I, I typed out, I looked at the list and I typed out through the uh, shipping thing, the shipping website. I typed everyone's address or a few people's address when I was shipping this stuff out. And then because I have the internet work, I mm -hmm. could copy paste the address from Kickstarter to the shipping label Ooh, maker you thing. you manually typed everything? Yeah. Not everything. There's a certain point where like, hey, I can just copy paste. So then I did that for the for the majority of the uh, <laughs> the orders. That I also need to invest in a the uh, that heat transfer printer. Yeah, so you can just make the labels yourself, basically. Yeah. So yeah. Because I printed out all the labels. With the heat transfer thing, it just makes the. That sticker label thing. Kostik said, uh, fulfillment is real insanity. Luckily, my friends is doing the hard, boring part. Boring part? Yeah. But that's just part of... That's part of doing projects uh, yeah, like that. Yeah, trying to make money <laughs> off yeah. of the project. Yeah. That's like, the uh, uh, the boring business side of it. Yeah. And that just means you just need to schedule out time to do that. And as you're doing that, you can be listening to a podcast or something else. I know I asked you before, but what podcast are you listening to? I've been oh, listening I to show a this lot up. of uh, your mom's house podcasts and stuff like that. But um, work's been really busy, so I haven't been able to listen to as much as I've wanted to. How about you? What have you been listening to? I've been enjoying World Record Podcast and The Bone Zone. The Bone Zone is an old podcast and it's it's been done, but the episodes are still good. They the haven't aged. Are... It's funny. It's so fucking funny. Caustic says Kickstarter is much better now, but a few years back it was a pain in the ass to deal with, especially with the mailing lists and shipping info. Oh my god. I barely just understood how all of the, this works. Also, um, Caustic, can I, is there a way for me to transfer, um, I want to create a mailing list for the next, uh, for the all the other projects in the future. Like, is there a way to compile the backers' emails into a list? Would I have to copy paste each email and make my own list? Sell, I imagine. That's what I thought. Copy and paste it, and then it would separate everything for you. I was like looking through it. I was like, I... there's got to be a, know what this is. 
a video on YouTube or something that has some guy fucking demonstrating how to do this shit. Yeah, I thought I saw videos of it, but I don't remember. But I'm gonna go look again. I'll show off this thing that I got in the mail a few days ago. Ben Seto on Instagram, he was doing these watercolor turtle drawings. So good. Hey Jesse, did you end up uh pulling the trigger on that? What's his name? Troy Troy Nixie. He was doing the the Doom that came to Gotham originals. I wanted to do it, but I need to be a little bit better with my money. You know how to be. Art of Castic is saying, I, I don't think there's a mailing list. And uh, Jesse was in the same boat as me. He wasn't able to uh, snag one of those original. Dude, he's so good. Like, I need I need something from him at some point. Yeah. Okay, so there's no mailing list. That means you have to... That means I would have to copy paste. Which I guess I just have to. Okay, I'll just do that. <clears throat> I'm glad that you're supporting artists. Buying their That's something stuff. I've been doing since I was like 13. That's when I bought my first painting ever. Remember, it was a uh, painting at some like hippie festival that I was at. And. Um, yeah, I've, I love art and I think I'll be collecting it forever. Like I told you, I bought that Kevin has originals from that first space night story. And I ended up pulling the trigger on buying an original page, which will go with that other original com original comic book page I have. And then I plan to buy one or two pages from you from this from vile. So I think at some point I'm literally, hopefully in my home office, I'll have an area dedicated to just comic book original pages. Yeah, that's cool. There's something cool about it being like stories that I got to write too. So oh, yeah. it'll be very cool to have the vile ones. And then I for sure will probably buy something horrible and disgusting from Soba for the ghost one. Definitely, I'm going to get something from Angriest Warrior from you. I've noticed you didn't, you haven't listed those yet. Do you plan on selling those? Because I'm just lazy. You know, also, people don't really buy original online. They have, oh, they see it in person. Yeah. Like yeah. And even at cons, I really only have two, two people that buy regularly which I'm fortunate for that for that so, just two people that I that I didn't have before I'll be right back Copy paste is currently the only option, but there's an option to send mes messages to all. Oh, there is a. Oh, that's the deal. Okay, so I can do that. 
I'll do that instead of the email. Okay, so th that sending messages to all backers, that eliminates having an email list since I can just, oh, I'll just do that. Thanks, Articost. I didn't realize you could do that. I remember seeing it, but I didn't put two and two together to... So then, Caustic, that means I have to go back to the first Kickstarter and and send us just that way, obviously. Caustic, does that mean if you have multiple... If you have multiple previous projects, do you have to send messages to all backers in all of those previous projects? Campaigns? I just noticed a very fun fact about one of my original comic pages. So I have a page from Cry Punch from Vlad. I don't even want to try to say his last Lego name. Stave. Yeah, Vlad, 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 Gustave. Yeah. Um, and I just noticed on the top left corner, it says Dagger Dagger page four, but it came out in Cry Punch. Oh, <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Which, yeah, I, when I saw that, I was like, that's not in Dagger Dagger. That's, that's in Cry Punch. So I, I went over there real quick to take a look at my books. And sure enough. So it looks like he was originally doing this story for Dagger Dagger, but wow. for whatever reason, maybe didn't meet the deadline or something and had to put it into Cry Punch. Wow. That's, a, that's a nice bit of, comic book history right there mm -hmm. it's in your house forever immortalized inky <laughs> knuckles has some really cool stuff and yeah they do yes they do artists on there actually have very reasonably priced originals um obviously some of them are way out of my price range but uh there is a lot of artists on there that i do really like that <laughs> Definitely, you could you could get some some cool stuff out of. I'm scared to look, but I will look afterwards. Yeah, it's and I'm tempting. looking right now, and uh, you could get uh, an Alexis uh, Zert commission off of this uh, eight by six with screen tones, you know, penciled, inked, whatever for a hundred bucks. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah. We gotta but, be friends um, with him. I I, I kind of yeah. talked to him on Instagram, so we're building it. We're build we're building that rapport. Then we can loop you in, and then uh, with the, uh, with Alexis, we can also uh, maybe hopefully loop uh, Andrew McLean in. It's wishful thinking. I love Andrew's style, McLean. His uh, it's so fun. Have you seen this? Um, Turtles at a Time cover by uh, Vlad. I've heard, I've heard of it that that series, but I haven't checked it out. So I for sure I've not seen the. Oh wow, that's sick. Vlad did one, and then Zirit did one as well. I've never heard of this series. Who's this guy? That's another Vlad. Another really cool artist I recommend checking out. Uh, he goes by Count Pagan on Instagram. Oh, yeah. But it, uh, his name is Kevin Castanero. His stuff is super cool. Um, we should just do an episode where we just look over people's. I would be down to, <laughs> to do that like every once in a while. Just have an episode dedicated to like artists that we think should have more of a following or Maybe there's some layouts or panels we've seen in some of their work that we want to like go over and like talk about. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I support his uh, Patreon, and oh wow, he, uh, I think after like four months of being on his Patreon, you get an original from him. He'll draw something oh, for you. Shit. So, um, he's drawing something for me right now that I'm really excited for. And I basically told him, give me a mummy cowboy 
like the good and the bad the and the ugly style like poncho but i want a mummy that's a cowboy and he was like pretty ecstatic about drawing that and he's he's already doing a great job he sent the the like the rough lines of it and it, it looks sick He's another one that I'm following that I don't see his posts. I guess he doesn't post a lot, though. No, most of his stuff is like, check out my Patreon because he's busy yeah. doing, like, he's working on a series that just had a Kickstarter. Oh, and, they, um, oh what the fuck? I missed it. I, yeah, like, I don't, he's not writing on it. He's just doing the art. So um, I haven't checked out the story. Um, and then and he did another one called Grit, which looked kind of cool, too. But, I need to check that one out. But he's also on Inky Knuckles, and a lot of his pages are like 100, 125 bucks. What the fuck does he do that? It's like crazy. Uh, another artist I really would like to maybe one day work with or maybe like own something from him is uh, Mark Laszlo. Yeah, I follow him too, but now I forgot what his art looks like. It was oh, yeah, funny because me and uh, when me and Sobo were at the bar together, we were talking about his work and like how sick his stuff is. I think he recently, well, not recently, maybe like a year, a year or two ago, he got to do a Hellboy comic. Wow. But if you go onto his Instagram, on his like link underneath his name, it's a comic book he wrote that you can read for free. And I believe it's called The Boy and the Ghost Clown. And it is a beautifully drawn, creepy interesting story yeah hopefully that's it yeah the boy yeah the boy who loved so it's the entire comic so if anybody's watching and they want to just check out a really cool interesting comic Yeah, they're strong. Mignola, Guy Davis. Mm-hmm. I believe he lives in... It's... I don't... It's it's some obscure, like, European country. Um, And if I remember correctly, he got to do a cover for Hellboy... And then Mike was like, wow, like, do you want to do a story? And he was like, yeah, I would love to do a story. And the story took place in Europe. And then Mike was like, wait a minute, where do you live? And he's like, oh, I live here. And he's like, why don't you just make you know, the, the story take place there? And I was like, damn, that's really cool that like you get to uh, work on something. Yeah, there it is uh, from Budapest. Budapest. That's so cool. There, there was a time, and I guess it's still happening now. But there was a time when uh, Mignola's style was getting popular. People would copy it, but it was just so mm -hmm. bad versions, renditions of of trying to do Mignola style, and it just wasn't. It just was not working. Now there's people that can can take it as inspiration and. They get their own style. And add like, their own, yeah, you, their own unique twist to it. Yeah. Yeah, I tried doing it too, but it's so it's hard to figure it out. You're you're good at doing early, Mike, for sure. Yeah. Um, I remember I forget which one which uh page it was, but you did an angriest warrior version of him on one of the side oh, plants yeah, yeah. of one of the pages, and I loved it. You did such a good job of doing early, Mike, on the angriest warrior. Yeah. You just have to be really like comfortable with just sharp edges and like straight lines, I feel like. Yeah. And then 
and even his straight lines aren't straight you know what i mean it's like they're close enough to to be jagged and hard but definitely he, he's free handing a lot of that you know yeah he is he is that and and just being free to uh incorporate shadows into your figures and then hope crafting it in such a way that it doesn't break up the character still reads solid How did, uh, I should have asked, asked this on the stream, but how did you and Kevin link up originally? Forgot. How did I learn? Oh, I learned of Kevin's stuff. Uh, it had to be a cartoonist kayfabe. They were showing off his Space Knights on the mailbag, I believe. Maybe it was in a mailbag episode, but I saw it on cartoonist kayfabe. I looked him up. I liked it, and then I had enough money to buy the the first trade. I was looking at it, and I was like, wow, look, there's so much energy. I like, I like how he draws. Started following him, and then I and I think we just followed each other from, from that point. And I don't know how we just kept talking, but we did. I think, you know, I also shared his, uh, I used to do the 15-second uh, book preview thing as reels on on instagram and i that's his was one of the books that i did it with i don't do that anymore i don't have time to do it and um yeah that was one of the books and i think he left a comment there and then we just started talking from that point i think that's how it went and then i think we both figured out that we were both following the same people and talking to the same people because Eli, because the uh, Cosmic Lion is run by Eli, and Eli Schwab was someone that I knew from uh, at least 2017 at sun on uh, Meltdown Comics on Sunset at that zine making event. Mm -hmm. And at that zine making event, I, I met Colby Bluth, Dave Baker, Nicole Gu, Eli Schwab, um, the guy that runs Toishes on. On Instagram, fuck what the fuck. Um, I met a few people from, from Meltdown. Yeah, it's weird just to know that the world gets smaller with the more people you know. Who the fuck was I looking at? Oh, the, um, Miguel. Yeah, like, I, I talked about it with the uh, interview with Kevin, but. I, I found his work through Reddit. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> I, I was so compelled by it that I emailed him. And he responded with, I know who you are. <laughs> and that tripped me out because that was the first time I'd ever reached out to like an artist or somebody like I was genuinely like interested in working with and them responding like that. And it was because he knew, he knew me through you. And, like, that made me laugh really hard. It made me go, like, whoa, like, that's cool. Like, I, I like that. Hopefully, the more work I produce, the more I can get like that. Or at least if I there's an artist I want to work with, I can send them some PDFs of my work. Yeah. It's like they can get an idea of, like, who I am and what I make and stuff like that. Hell yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. That is what it's all about. That's why I always want to make sure to like to remind people. I feel like you're at the when you're at the booth, I like to remind people or introduce you to the people that are buying the book. If they're buying the book. Like, hey, this is the guy. This is the guy that wrote it. Which is super cool. Like, I, I do appreciate that. You definitely don't need to do that. But like when you do do it, they genuinely there's like a level of excitement and then like I get to talk to them for a bit and it's fun to socialize with people who are like supporting you and genuinely into what you're doing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. I, yeah, I think it's only proper to, to do that. 
And it, it is kind of weird, like if if you if you are if someone is a fan of of your work, and uh, they they buy the book in front of you, and then like they leave, and like <laughs> later on they find out, like, hey, yeah, that was Warwick. Yeah, Warwick was right there, and they didn't know. They only only know afterwards. They might they might feel yeah, kind of bad. Yeah, it was funny. Um, Jimmy Mondo. He he when he met me physically, he did not expect me to look the way I look. What did he say he, that uh, he thought you looked like? He, he said I thought I would look like Eric or Roshi. Sorry, like oh. And I started laughing, and I was like, "No, like <laughs> that." Me and Roshi look nothing alike. What did he think Roshi looked like? I wonder that. Well, like, he must have been like, oh, yeah, like, I was right when he saw Roshi, because that's how he thought Roshi looked, right? So, and then then he hears my voice, and then he assumes that I look like that, too. hitting the gym hard or when I'm going to be yoked for our interviews. Is this, was this because of Orc Gym or was this before Orc Gym? Uh, it started before Orc Gym, but I won't deny Orc Gym further pushing the limits of what my body can do. I'm just going to work out my forearms. <laughs> Just huge Popeye arms. Yeah, that's all I want. Wouldn't that be sweet? <laughs> like, oh fuck. That's the only muscle I, I like because I draw so much that it, it's worked out that big. Yeah. Jesse's mentioning something about statutes of limitations. What was that a reference to? We got a lawyer here. Oh, lordy, lordy. If I ever uh, have to go to court, I need a lawyer. I'm going to get that chicken guy to do it for me. Who? The, the chicken. The chicken lawyer from Looney Tunes. Oh yeah, yeah, that guy. Was his name Foghorn? Foghorn, Leghorn, or something like that? Leghorn, Foghorn, and Leghorn. Uh, that's it. Red light, green light. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse saying no one will find out about work shady past. Yeah. My time in the in the gulag. Yeah. Holy shit, the gulag, that's rough. It is what it is. I'm a free man now. That's all that matters. Was that when you were in Monogatar Solid 1 or, or 2? <laughs> Snake Eater. That song slaps, though. It does. I like the other one too, the one that goes like do 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 Okay, I know which one you're talking about now. That game, uh fucking genius, man. Like that psychomantis fight where like uh <laughs> you have to like switch out your fucking your your controller from player one to player two because your controller stops working he starts like reading your memory card so he knows what games you've been playing yeah. like that's so crazy that they were able to figure that out and then implement it how did you figure out to put it in the second second port uh, I forgot. I think there's like I think he says something to you to like allude to that but yeah like your 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 controller just stops working and yeah. you have to like fucking pull it out and plug it into the player two 
and I think in the first game, um, there's lasers that you need to get past. And if I remember correctly, the way to solve that puzzle to see where the lasers are is you have to make your character smoke. Which oh, is yeah. Like an item. So yeah. you have to like literally be like, yeah, okay, I got to pull out cigarettes and have them smoke so I can see where these fucking lasers are. Yeah, I remember that. I remember reading the magazines for the third one, uh, for Snake Eater, that old guy, that old sniper guy. Yeah, I think his name was The End, right? Or something like that? Yeah, The End. That was his code name? There was a, there was a trick where if, you, if you're if you in that fight, you can... You can, uh, you can wait him out, yeah, yeah let him die. Yeah, that was so yeah. fucking good. So cool. And that's the cra- the crazier thing is you can kill him before that too. Yeah, you, you could. Yeah, you can actually yeah. play it. You can play the you, level. <laughs> you can you can snipe him while he's still in the wheelchair because there's a scene. Where you oh see yeah, 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 yeah. And if you snipe him before the cutscene starts, <laughs> you you can kill him before the fight even begins. Shit, that's funny. Fucking genius. And I love when he dies. He, he just like fucking melts into like earth, just crumbles. <laughs> yeah, he's that old. Yeah, he was called uh, the end. I was right. His his line to you is, "I am the end. I am here to bring you to your ultimate fate." He was over a hundred years old, and he was defeated by Naked Snake in 1964. I also tripped out in this, the ending of the second, the second uh, game where I think Otacon calls Snake at the end of the uh, after like the after credits scene, and he lets them know that the uh, thirteen guys are still alive or something the guys are running after his death Um, yeah yeah you know how we were talking about uh, avert expectations like they put this old man in a wheelchair and you don't see him as a threat at all but the second like he's like oh it's time to fight like he's like sprinting through the jungle (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Sprinting through the jungle, but then he—it's like a hide and seek thing because you gotta have to be looking for him. And it makes sense if he's an old man; he's not gonna be running around the whole time. Yeah, he's in just a full ghillie suit. Yeah, just disappearing. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm reading the specifics of the fight. Um, when in the prone position, he would become one with the area. His body temperature lowered oh, so that it, would, it, it was close uh, to that of the surrounding foliage that made spotting him with thermal goggles difficult. Additionally, when the end stamina dropped dangerously low, he would absorb the sun's rays and recover his stamina quickly. Oh, while yeah. doing so, the liver spots on his head would disappear you become rejuvenated, gaining a slightly younger appearance. I didn't notice that. that. Well, like, yeah, like, as I, I was a kid, you know what I mean? Like, this guy was, I was terrified. Watching him run around and just disappear. Yeah. I do remember one thing I felt so stupid. There, there's that one part where you're wading through like a a shallow river. Do you remember that? You just like had to keep moving forward. Are you talking about where you fight the sorrow and like all those ghosts come? Yeah. Like that. yeah. Yeah. That took for, for me to figure out because like I didn't know where to go. So I just kept moving forward. Yeah. But even, even still, as I was doing that, I was like, this is taking forever. It's like, oh, maybe that's the point. 
Yeah, because like I think you're almost like in purgatory. I think that's yeah. what that whole like scene was supposed yeah. to like represent. Yeah. Because games didn't do that. This one did. One thing that I did notice with uh, this silhouette of <laughs> Jay celebrating that he stole a candy bar from from the child mm -hmm. is that the candy bar silhouette is a rectangle like the, the lotto ticket. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, but that's just a mirror. Mm -hmm. Luckily, you have the adjacent uh, panels to help kind of uh, really hammer in the fact that he's holding a candy bar. Oh, yeah. yeah definitely. Uh, that is an interesting uh, parallel. Yeah. It's like unintended, but then it, it makes so much sense. It's like, oh, yeah. Then... Oh, yeah. That's what one look would look like. I dig the uh, direction you chose for him entering the alleyway. I like that you did the camera facing out towards the street. Yeah, I think I like doing that because it's... It's just immediate. And I don't have to think too much about it. Mm -hmm. There's some stuff I had to figure out was like... Where to place a certain a certain thing that but you also with the script you have that little bit of uh, sequential cartooning with the candy bar being ripped and then the big ass like bigger than half page panel of Jay about to eat into it this is a, an example of uh, different things, this page. Mm -hmm. Cho chocolate babies? Chocolate babies. Philip does come up with, with good uh, titles. He named Rhin the Rhino and Juggernaut book. <laughs> Such a good name for that comic. I almost edited edited that that title down though, because I could not figure out how to fit all those. You, they, words it on wouldn't the cover. have been as good though. Having the endangered no. African horn man like that yeah. is that's fucking hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, and then I realized that the turtles did that. You know, they had four words for a title. Four long words for a title. If they can do that, there has to be a way. So I just stole the logo. Stole two logos. There's also another project uh, happening. The uh, we have a exquisite corpse comic. Okay. Where each artist draws one page, and then the the next artist only gets that previous page to tell their part of the story. I'm second cool. in line. The first one is done by. The person that suggested doing the project, Quartacular. So he did the first page. Not going to give it away, but he kept it real open. That's probably the best way to do it in the beginning, right? Like yeah. you want it, you want people to, he wants you to take it somewhere and then hopefully you leave it open enough where somebody can do, do something so. may, hopefully something you didn't even see or think about oh yeah that's what that's the exciting part 
We even have a regular exquisite corpse project. There's only two that were completed. Look at all that trays. Jesse just added me on, or he's going to add me on Steam. We're going to start playing Diablo. He's going to get to see how bad I am at that game. What's Diablo? Is that first person? No, it's like a top-down view. Like, but Is that we're going we're gonna to fight demons together. Uh, yeah, pretty much. It's going to be super rad. I gotta go look up the album. It's basically kind of like a medieval fantasy, but with heavy like religious tones and like demons. It's, you know, it's called Diablo. Like the 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 big baddie of the game is the devil, and uh, basically demons and monsters are plaguing the land. And you you choose like the classic archetypes, like oh, are you a barbarian? Are you a fighter? Are you a priest? Like and all of them have their own like abilities and attacks and stuff like that. Is it an MMO like World of Warcraft? Um, I believe you play on servers, and I believe oh. you you can play with multiple people. But it is there is a campaign, there is like a story, oh. and you you can you can beat the game, you know. Um, but it's one of those where they have like enough like side content where like even if you beat the main story. There's still tons of stuff, yeah. He's saying action RPG. Yeah, that's probably the better... Action Because MMO is more like, yeah, like World of Warcraft, which it definitely is, is not like that. I've been wanting to play Boulder's Gate 3 as well, which is also kind of like an action RPG, which is uh, basically Dungeons & Dragons. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's an old game. Yeah, the they the the third one's like coming out pretty soon. They've had it in beta for a while, but it's actually gonna get like a release pretty soon. It looks great. Yeah, all I do is just watch. The way I play the video games is just watching the footage on YouTube. It's it's very hard for me now. I don't get to play as much as I used to. Um, it's kind of reserved to the weekends. If it's a weekday, I usually get home between the gym and cooking and everything. And then by the time I got to go to bed, it's just... I have no time. The way that... um. The video games were scheduled uh, when I was growing up that we couldn't play it during the weekdays. You had to do your homework. Mm. On the weekends, you can play video games. And then now, it's like, I don't even play video games. And you're doing something similar to the thing that I am doing that I used to do, is just play it on weekdays. Yeah. It's just not and, enough time. Uh, Jesse just asked if I'm going to play the open beta for Diablo next weekend. Yes, I was planning to. I think it's like, what, the the 26th? Yeah, the 25th and the 26th. Yeah, I was going to download it. I've heard mixed reviews about Diablo. Um, I'm really hoping good. I'm hoping I'm enjoying it. I didn't play Diablo 3 because I heard it wasn't super fun. The last Diablo I played was Diablo 2, which I, I did play a lot of. But... um. I will give the beta a shot and hopefully it's good enough to, to make me pull the trigger on it. Jesse linked Jesse linked the uh the latest Tekken eight trailer on on the Ink and Drink Discord. It was yeah. on King. Did you ever play Tekken? I did Tekken. play Tekken, but I was definitely more of a Street Fighter kind yeah. of guy. And the yeah. new Street Fighter looks actually pretty sick. So it does. I'm wondering if it's good. And I think you get to make your own characters in this new one too, I which is super that. cool. 
So it's it's almost like Soul Calibur. I'm not sure if you ever used. To yeah, play Soul oh, I love Soul Calibur. Yeah. I still say that Soul Calibur, uh, the first PlayStation One intro, that was the best intro of all video game intros. Oh yeah. The best. There's probably good other good ones too, but that was one Are of the you... first best ones. It was so cinematic, but also so Japanese <laughs> anime. I'm on Steam right now. I'm seeing if there's anything good on sale. That's another issue, too, is like when you have a PC and you're doing PC gaming, it's so much cheaper and more affordable because there's like so many sales all the time. And I have just a bunch of games I've never fucking touched because I'll just be on here and be like, oh, wow, that's only $5 right now. I should get that. And I get it. And I just never touch it. Oh, shit. Genius. It's just boring watching me spot blocks. Maybe it is. I'll do some later, you know. I was trying to study as much Kevin Catalan drawing as I could during that stream, especially the uh, cyberpunk story. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, what can I take? What can I use in this one? <laughs> That's good that you were recording too, because now we can go frame by frame and just decide. I the way he drew the motorcycle scenes was, God quite, damn it. Uh, was so fucking good, dude. So good. So fucking good. Oh, uh, I'm looking through the Steam right now. Um Jesse, I'm not sure if you played Disco Elysium. But it is a very good game. It's under ten dollars right now. So, um, basically, like a noir that takes place in like a Euro futurism, but it's very like seventies futurism. And uh, you're basically just a fucking shitty cop who needs to like go check out like a case. Like, oh, uh, there's a dead body, and they send you out to investigate. And as you play the game, it just does dissolves and like you start realizing there's weird things going on and the case starts getting bigger and bigger and uh you you have stats so you can you can build a character who's like an enforcer who just intimidates and kicks down doors or you could make a sherlock holmes s character who notices oh like you have red mud on your shoes red mo mud is only in this quarry you said you were here yesterday but by the mud on your shoes that that can't be you know and uh really fun game really well done good art direction good music um but yeah like definitely would recommend it just so asking who's your favorite character from soul caliber favorite character i honestly the fact that i got to make characters was my favorite thing um and then they started adding characters from like major IPs and stuff like that, oh, which was super yeah. cool. So it was like, wait yeah. a minute, I get to fucking play as Link. I get to play oh, as man. you know. So, um, but let me look. I I know there's one. I think it's from the third one. I don't know his name though. I liked. I did like. I like Nightmare. I I'm I. All of these. The 3D fighting games, I'm still like learning. I was always learning how to use 
the characters, but Nightmare was cool. Nightmare's sword was insane. Like that's what <laughs> like made him so fucking cool. Yeah, um, he had to like really block everyone's attacks, and he had to like really time it out to like dole out that heavy hit. I was super into uh, what's his name a- Astroth or whatever. Oh yeah, like, he, was, yeah. he was cool too. Um, I definitely was into like the berserker looking dudes. Like the bigger yeah. you could give me a guy, the cooler. I like trying to figure out Voldo. Yeah, Voldo, like, I always assumed he was kind of like more of like, I'm not sure if you read Berserk, but there's a whole arc that was heavily influ- influenced by like Arabian Nights kind of stuff. Mm. And every time I saw him, I kind of assumed he was like this crazy bondage monster from like uh, from some crazy far away desert land oh. Surugi, I didn't use him too much sometimes I did but not. oh uh not Hoarong uh the guy the um the Korean guy that had a sword from that first you one. Remember Abyss? He was like one of the, the final bosses in Soul Calibur 3. He had like the scythe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was pretty cool. Voldo, I always tried to uh, do the do his throw where he spins you on the on his <laughs> weapon. Yeah, I was such a fan of Soul Calibur that I bought both versions. I bought the GameCube version to get Link and then I uh I got the PlayStation version to get. What did you get on PlayStation? I don't know. I I played it on GameCube. Um, let me look that up. PlayStation. Hold on. Soul Calibur. Character. Exclusive. What the fuck was it? Hihachi. No, Spawn was Xbox. I think it's Heihachi. And then there was like a a Star Wars one too. Do you remember that? So it says, nearly all characters have been featured in Soul Series, title in the past return. Um, I think the characters that were available was Itachi, which Link and Spawn. Those were the three yeah. like exclusives. Was the Xbox one Spawn? Yeah, the Xbox one, one was Spawn. Interesting. I yeah, I didn't even know Spawn because I didn't play it on Xbox, but I didn't know Spawn was even. Yeah, I don't. I I had friends who had Xboxes, but they weren't into Soul Calibur, so I would never got the privilege to the only play one Spawn. To play Halo. Yeah. Damn, I'm reading a thing that's saying uh, instead of Hitachi, it was almost Cloud from Final Fantasy. That would have been fucking sick, too. Oh, damn. That makes more sense because he has a weapon. Yeah, he's got a huge-ass blade, you know? Yeah, Hitachi's just, just a man. Yeah, Jesse Spawn. That's weird, right? I didn't play it on Xbox, but I definitely uh, I, I didn't know he was on there. Yeah, Spawn had an axe like into his uh, medieval weapon. It's funny, I had that toy, the, the medieval Spawn. Yeah. That was the best one. What is the... Is that like, does he get sent back in time? What is the <laughs> I don't premise of, of that specific Spawn? I have no idea. There's other versions where uh, they had exclusive Star Wars characters. I forgot who 
went to who, but there was Yoda and there was also a Darth Vader. I believe the third one was uh, Darth Vader's Apprentice from that one video game. Have you tested out uh, Twitch for streaming video games? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, the most I've ever done is what we do on Discord, where we share like the screen and stuff like that. I have yet to uh, just go live, basically. I feel like I need somebody to riff off of. You know what I mean? I can't stream by myself because I'm not one of those guys that like reacts to everything like verbally. Yeah. I feel like when I watch streamers that like stream by themselves and they have to comment on every little thing that happens, I don't want to play like that. Yeah. No. Yeah. I totally get that. <laughs> it's funny that they do though. Yeah. I, I, it must be, I would feel so disingenuous about doing yeah. it. I'm like being like, Whoa, that's whoa. What's going on? Crazy. Oh my God. Whoa. Like, Did you, just see what that NPC said to me. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I did. I am watching it with you. <laughs> yeah. When I play video games, like like let's say I'm playing Grand Theft Auto, I don't announce that I'm gonna run over that guy. I'm not gonna be yeah. like, "Fuck that guy!" I'm gonna hit him. Like I just that's in my head, and then I hit him. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to totally streaming with Warwick Walker. <laughs> We're gonna get crazy. What are you playing? What are you yeah. playing this stream, um, Warwick? Yeah, I'm playing the the, the newest game called uh, Irwin Papa. As you can see, I'm controlling an Irwin Papa, making an original page for a comic book. It's super crazy. I'm about to put some lines down. Whoa. Smoke. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, sounds looks like uh, Jesse's playing his video game too. <laughs> Whoa! Oh shit! Whoa! What's this shit right here? Whoa! You need to. Show. You need to start being more like uh, Bob Ross, where you're just announcing like, "I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna draw a little rapper right here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put some lines. We're gonna have the foil ripping, the foil ripping. right here. Yeah. Yeah, this one now. Uh... Uh, Philip uh, named this candy bar. He called it uh, Chocolate Babies. Not racist at all. God, I, I didn't even think of it in that context. Thanks for that, Erwin. <laughs> but it's not. All right, but it's <laughs> I know, not. I know it's not. But okay. now, now you got me thinking. I don't want to be thinking. It's not our fault. It's not our fault Philip's racist. <laughs> That's racist. Juliana said that. She's like, "Oh, that's racist." And I was like, "How is that racist? How is that racist?" The act of racism is, is uh, being a racist is thinking one race is superior than another. Read a dictionary. All right. <laughs> okay. Stand corrected. What is the best race of all the time, though? If I really had to narrow it down. <laughs> get ready to clip. <laughs> Jesse, get ready to clip this. I, we, should, we should do that. Um, and then do the Always Sunny where it's like uh, Warwick and Irwin get canceled. Like edits yeah. right, right as I, after I say that. We do that. We could also, uh, that could also be one of the first five questions we ask our guests. Dude, so um, you know how... With Kevin, I was like, oh, we're going to uh, have a list of questions for you and we're going to start easier uh, and get harder. So the first question was like, what's your favorite color? And that was a joke question. I thought he was just going to be like, oh, uh, blue. Like <laughs> it was a throwaway question, but he actually turned it into a real like discussion. And it sucks because what I was going to do was as soon as he said 
oh, like this color. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, cool. So we're going to move on to a, a little bit of harder of a question. Uh, do you think 9-11 was an inside joke? Yeah. And that was going to be literally the next step. But he he had turned that question into a legitimate, like, discussion. <laughs> so, like, it didn't – the the switch didn't feel as, as good, so I didn't do it. And I was really <laughs> bummed I didn't get to just ask him. Because him and me had only been talking – for like less than five minutes at that point. And I already wanted to do that to him and put him in that situation. And uh, I was I, thinking you were doing that. Yeah. That's what I was going to do. But setting he, he, fucked me. he fucked me. He, he turned it into a real discussion. <laughs> Jesse further, furthers the question, uh, which race is the best and worst? Same with genders. We can, whoever wants to go first can go have you have you seen that video of the guy that literally he says that that's that? like yeah so he he legitimately oh, goes wait. like all right so and wait. then it ends up being like nascar like he's talking oh, about like oh. like actual <laughs> races not like <laughs> that's funny <laughs> holy shit that's funny yeah, I, when I heard you asked that question, I was like, "Where oh, is he gonna go with this?" <laughs> yeah. And I was getting ready. I was getting ready because, like, that's a what a what a, like a such a softball question to help. It's like oh, that does not work. Yeah, uh, and literally the follow up was, "Do you think nine eleven was an inside job?" And then he fucking he he took that from me. I wanted I to ask him if he had sex. Hey, what's your favorite <laughs> color? Have you had sex? <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite sex style? Yeah. <laughs> Not positions, say style. Yeah, style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See if we if if he played into that, I would I would want him to have played the uh the uh the virgin uh, uh role where uh <laughs> I guess he does answer uh, what his sex style is. Then I would reply, "Is that similar to uh, uh, up, up, down, down, A B A B on a controller?" <laughs> we'll ask him that next time. Yeah, he'll be on again. I'll get him. I'm you don't. You do. You ask him. Oh fuck! I wish you. I wish it was recorded. I like ask ask him again his favorite color. <laughs> As a, do I pretend like I don't remember asking him, or is it one of those yeah, like, follow was... up where I want to see if it's changed yet? I, yeah, I'm kind of thinking of the first, you know. Well, I'm thinking of both. Like either you can go in where you forget. Or you can go in where he does change the answer, and then you just have that clip ready. It was like, well, according to oh, he like, like, asked, like you said, yeah, this basically is your you're a liar. Out. Just like yeah, <laughs> you just call him out. You're not allowed to like have changing opinions or views. It's like, no, you you you've already expressed that this is your favorite color, and there's no takesy backsies. Everybody knows that. Jesse said names name some styles please. What's the loudest? What's like what's like your loudest name organ? Three sex styles, some poser. Yeah. Um <laughs> there's sloppy. Sloppy's a style. Uh, sloppy style. Um sloppy. I feel like the opposite of sloppy would be dry. Dry style. Yeah, dry style. You know, um, you you also do like a, like a dry to wet. You would do it like where it gets dry to wet. Isn't that's how it is every time, isn't it? Isn't that how it's sometimes it's to be? already wet though. <laughs> I've never had that. No, sometimes. <laughs> I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes. And when I that say like when I say wet, rare. when I say wet from the get go, I'm meaning me, because I already went. Yeah, Jesse's saying animal style. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's when you throw uh, grilled onions on her back with yeah. a thousand island dressing. <laughs> Sometimes I do the shallow howl. <laughs> or I think of them. Or I think of what they, they think they look like inside. I'm too literal. When I think of how they look in the inside, I just see muscle and like no lips covering their teeth. No eyelids, yeah. 
So when you look down, you see all that caca. <laughs> yeah, all the poop festering in the, in the middle there. And then you see your dick like pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> what oh, if you saw that true. though? Yeah, I'm glad I don't have X-ray vision. That's for sure. <laughs> but in the future, we, we will. Then would you? Would you? Dude, if I had X-ray vision, that? I would always I would like just... point at their poop and be like, "Yeah, you should go take care of that." I'm like, <laughs> You'd see it groundhogging. So You'd see it like going yeah. lower. <laughs> <laughs> There'd probably be more farting happening in the future too, because just imagine friends or like your girlfriend or husband, like you'll be messing around and like uh, pushing each other's uh, stomachs to make the farts <laughs> come out because <laughs> you can see it. <laughs> God. Gotta make that caca move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I was like reading a meme where somebody was like, there's no more gentlemen anymore. Like nobody will push in my stool. And he said, maybe after lunch. Like, <laughs> 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 so gross. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's 2023. Oh, man. It's okay. Yeah. If you don't need ass, then like you can't survive in today's relationship climate for sure. Is that true? Oh, yeah. I must be old fashioned then. I would never. You'd never eat booty? No. You're such a prude. Isn't it stinky? It's just stinky. Yeah, that's what makes it cool, dude. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to do it, and I don't want to have <laughs> it done to me. The way you said it was so bashful, I don't know. I really don't. I wouldn't have it, I wouldn't have it done to me either. That's gross. You got to come up and kiss me? You're, you're your a, butt, your you're tongue was in my prude. butt. You're such a prude, dude. Mm -mm. That's why you, you, you don't clean yourself good enough? Come on. I do. But, I mean, just there's that risk. And that leads us into today's sponsor, uh, Bidet. Get one. That is all. What's a Bidet product? What's a brand? Toto. Yeah, so totally. Really, but yeah, they used to. Toilets. That one, that one actually sponsored podcast, didn't it? Oh, I don't know, but if I remember they the, do that. Like, we definitely need to get them at some point. They used to. They don't do it anymore. I don't hear their I, name anymore. I don't think I could afford a nine thousand dollar toilet, but if they want to send me one, Toto's nine thousand dollars. Damn. Some of them, like you can, you can get ones that like sing to you and do your taxes and shit. Let me. I'm gonna go on Toto.com. Now it's just uh, the sponsors. Now it mostly is BetterHelp, uh, Blue Apron. Oh, I think I, is still a sponsor. Uh, I know Tushy does. Uh, Tushy, yeah, that's Tushy the one. Does, yeah, Tushy does ones. I've heard yeah. them before. So. Yeah, I think so, that's the one. Not Toto. That's the one that does sponsors. Yeah. You're right. So I'm on Washlit Plus. Hey, can Kevin just draw the next issue of Vile? I can I can focus on English Warrior. Kevin can yeah, do just trick, file. Just trick him into doing it, and then yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, it, just keep uh, I'll I'll pitch into work. Uh, just keep commissioning him like panels, mm -hmm. but don't describe you know just describe what's in the panel. Don't give him any script or anything. Just commission him for the panels, and I'll format Dude, it into this is into a so page. this is how how fucked you know if you're ordering a Toto toilet. Uh -oh. They don't. They don't even have just for sale. You have to send them a professional inquiry about the fucking toilet. They, they you can't just buy one. I can't. There's no like on their website. I'm pretty sure you can buy one just secondhand from like somebody. But on their physical website, if you go to the products section, it shows you the products. But you cannot just purchase. You have to physically email them about wanting to purchase a product product i wonder if that's because they have been having problems from before but i guess toilets are different every toilet's different let's see let's see second hand what a toto toilet is When I think of Toto, I think of Wizard of Oz, uh, Dorothy's so the, dog. Yeah, the dog. Um, 
a Toto Neo Rest 750H dual flush toilet you can purchase off of Amazon for a measly fourteen thousand dollars. Okay. Or you could you could you could lowball it, and instead of getting the 750H, you get just you just get the 700H, and that one's going to be around six thousand. Why is it that much? Because they like they do everything. They they spray you, they dry you, the the seat heats up. It it chimes. At my old job because it was a it was a our our company was owned by a parent Japanese company, so all our bathrooms had like really nice bidets. They sing to you. You step through that stall and they chime. They're excited for what you're about to do to them. What did they and sing? What's the song? Can I, you do a song? It, it was like it was like ding ding ding, and then like it like <laughs> lit up. Oh shit, lit up! It, it started creating this weird power dynamic. Like I felt like a dom. Like I went in there and I was just gonna ruin this sub, and it was excited for it. It was crazy. You already got a clip from Valley Dweller. Every toilet's different. Valley Dweller. <laughs> He's just been lurking. <laughs> What's up, Jeremy? Oh, uh, speaking of uh, video games and streaming, Valley Dweller does it all work. Not only is he drawing on one screen, there's also this like smaller window, much like the size of my animated mouth window. There's a video game playing that he's also playing or watching or streaming. Like he'll he'll play streams on his stream as he's drawing in multiple windows I mean, with the chat still open too. It's like what? You've, <laughs> you've probably noticed this, but a, a weird format is they'll play a video of like a video game and then we'll have the audio over it. But the audio yeah. will be like telling a story and it has nothing to do with <laughs> the game. And I'm pretty sure um, the clip isn't even part of whatever podcast or whatever thing they pulled that from. And it's just they want to put something for you to look at while you're listening. And to me, that's super weird. And the other trend I've noticed, and it's honestly kind of bugging me, is when you have somebody giving you financial advice or mortgage advice, and then it's dual screen and you'll have somebody who's just a complete random stranger who's not adding or speaking, just nodding in agreement and like pointing at like the next time, like, yeah, like this guy. Yeah. Listen, listen. And I'm like, I see so much of it. I'll start sending it to you. I don't get it. It's weird. Like just leave the video unedited. Like, you know what I mean? Just have the video <laughs> yeah. out there of the guy giving the advice. If you're not going to add anything, it fucking trips me out. Uh, Valley Dweller is saying there's a side game called Stream Riders that viewers can prep for a battle over time. Then you run it every half hour. What the? Jesus, Valley I, Dweller. I don't get it. Like, fuck. You're so deep into this. Let me <laughs> fucking Google this shit. Steam Riders. Raiders. Riders on the storm. Um. Yeah, I'll watch Valley Dweller's stream. I was like, oh, fuck, okay. It's like, I'm following that. And I, I guess it's like, it plays into um, attention spans too, I guess to some degree. Because I could see how dr watching someone draw is, is boring if you're not yeah. wanting to learn to learn their process and technique. But if I had like a video game in the background, like you could just be watching that too. Oh, that is, uh, this is a fun concept. So uh, Stream Riders is a simple battle game played during downtime on a stream. Streamers are the captains and uh, viewers make up the army. So that is, uh, that's oh, so you're pretty, engaging that, way. that is very smart because you, now you're having your audience engage and like, it's definitely more, they get to do more. They get to have more fun instead of just typing into the chat or something. <clears throat> I, I wish I could hire somebody who just did all this shit for me and I just had to show up because this all seems like so much work. Once you get uh, YMH money, I think that's when you can start doing that. 
because they have no pr- the you know Tom and Christina they prep nothing or you know the least they're not setting up the cameras and all that audio were they were they joking uh their employee having like gambling addiction oh issues? I don't know yeah I remember <laughs> that I was like that could be real but then, yeah because they, 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 like, they said there. it but then like <laughs> there was a bit of like a chuckle somewhere yeah. and like part of me was like wait a minute like are they just fucking with me yeah because they, they, they don't address be. it they just they just yeah. leave it like <laughs> yeah they're fucking they're fucking around it was too good and, and if it was genuine uh christina would have been uh crying a little bit oh yeah because it's you know it's one of their employees one of their it's almost like a kid to them yeah, because they were like, yeah, we're paying for it. Like, like yeah. yeah, if you're paying for it, like, you're not crying. Like, how, well, why is that affecting you yeah, that way? It's a really nice resort down in Malibu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that approach. I also like the approach when the hosts uh, um, give shit to their employees who take vacations during during the days that they are uh, recording. Cause you know, like when 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 else are the is an employee going to take vacation? They're not all going to take vacation at the same time. And it's fun just listening to. There's another podcast that I listen to, and sometimes he'll give shit. He'll 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 uh he'll shit on uh the employees that take vacations. Nadav, I'm on, I'm on Nadav's Instagram. I'm trying to see if Native. there's any inkling. You know, sometimes the dove is a bit of a dum dum. He he, he literally of... has a a whole thing on his uh, Instagram that's he... dedicated to gambling. <laughs> he, f- <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Even Jesse believes it. The dove has a gambling problem for sure. Some of us are going to WonderCon next weekend. Next, next weekend. Maybe Saturday, maybe Sunday. What is it? WonderCon. Oh, WonderCon. Okay. Yeah. I know. I know WonderCon. Where is it being held? Anaheim. Same place as DesignerCon. Across the street of, oh, from Disneyland, just. Just a block away from Ray's Comics. I'll probably, uh, I'll swing by and check it out. You guys aren't going to booth or are you guys just going to hang out? No, we're just going to hang out. We still don't know what day we're going though. Mm. Keep me in the loop. Just let me know. I Let's want to go Saturday. Let me see if they answered. Yeah, so Saturday they open from 10 to 7 p.m. And then... Friday is eleven thirty to seven, and then Sunday is ten to five. I'm in the group uh, chat. I started a group chat with the people that wanted to uh, go, and I said it like Saturday, and then someone else said uh, whatever day works, you can do Saturday or Sunday, and the one other person just liked that comment and did not specify which day sounds like saturday to me does that mean i would have to say that then just to yeah, get just things put, going yeah just put in the message great what time do you guys want to meet up on, on saturday. saturday yeah and then saturday yeah. all in cap right yep and then someone and then after i do that someone will say i i like sunday mm-hmm. I just and then you it. say too late bitch yeah. and then you say saturday in all caps again Okay, good. Yeah, I'm glad that we're thinking the same way. Mm-hmm. I realize now that I kind of have to like take some initiative and not be so nice. Yeah, everybody's a coward. Nobody just wants to commit. Orpha's asking if there are going to be some gangsters boys meet up at WonderCon. There possibly could be. Yeah, I definitely think the the intent is there. Um, make sure you wear your finest flannel. Just only top button. We'll get some bandanas and we'll 
begin gangsters. And um, if you, if if anybody here is going to the convention and they don't have shelters, we will have some like emergency shelters for you. For, uh, sizes eight to ten, though. We're not going to bring a whole, <laughs> the whole size. Yeah, that would that would just be ridiculous. You ever own shelters? No. Yeah, me neither. Did you? No. It was too. I don't know. I didn't like how it looked. Yeah, they're not nice looking for no. sure. They look more like girls' shoes, female shoes. Dude, Excuse me, female. Stop. Uh, feminine. Oh, damn it. Um, <laughs> gender free. They look like gender, gender free. Gender. <laughs> gender free shoes. That's what they look. Like. I was always a fan of the gazelles. The the gazelles is better. Yeah. Shell toes is too, too puffy looking. We need those. What are the square slipper looking shoes? <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know. I'm shoes? Look them up really. <laughs> Talking about it, they look like loafers almost. Like... Yeah, like house shoes, but they're not. But they are. <laughs> I'm gonna just put cholo shoes. Damn. This the second this second I put cholo, the first thing is shoes and then cholo house shoes. It's probably house shoes. It is. <laughs> uh how much is everyone it? everyone's calling them cholo shoes, but I wanna know like what they were like the original name of that that shoe. Your mom's um, chunklas? probably their moms they're they're being called uh moccasins and slippers that is what oh I, yeah i can see up. that um but yeah damn these are flying dog <laughs> and they're dirt cheap they're like 13 to like 20 dollars oh that's why and they're all corduroy aren't they all corduroy yeah <laughs> bring corduroy back Dude, I did okay, like good uh, corduroy pants. I'm going to drop this in chat real quick. Everybody who plans to come to WonderCon has to wear these uh, slippers that I just put into chat on the stream. So if you could please order those, I'd really appreciate it. <laughs> Warwick, we should start a Amazon list for people to buy us. <laughs> I'd be down <laughs> and see. <laughs> Even if we got one dumb thing out of it, like I'd be happy. So what uh, the podcast Bone Zone, th Bone Zone did, they started an Amazon list, and people would actually buy them stuff. Some pricey stuff, too. And then they felt bad. The host felt bad that people were actually buying stuff for them. So, so yeah. they kind of like, hey, stop buying it. But if you want to, only if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't close the list. Yeah. The, the guilt was there, but <laughs> yeah. the capitalistic need for more yeah. was stronger. They're not going to deny them. How, yeah, if, how, if the people want to buy shit, they want to buy shit. I'm, I'm not there to stop that. How street safe are those 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 shoes, though? They're, they can't be street safe. Those was just slippers. Oh, that that's yeah. I know. Like if something fell on your foot, you're losing a toe for <laughs> sure. But then again, like how how street safe are vans? That's you know what I was mean? thinking too. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess that is true. And people wear open toe slippers too. Mm -hmm. It's even more exposed. I mean, but I don't know if you're in if you're in the mean streets of L.A. or Long Beach. If I'm getting down with <laughs> some fools, I definitely don't want to have my loafers on. You know what yeah. I mean? If you get if you got caught in a drive by, you don't want you don't want to be wearing loafers <laughs> when you're dead when you're dying. If I'm a get got. <laughs> And I don't want to get, I would definitely not wear my loafers when I'm trying to be gone. You know what I mean? Exact, exactly. Mm hmm Oh, Quark's in here. Quarktacular's in the house. Quarktacular. Do you notice, uh, what I've noticed, Quark, is that um, once you hit the two-hour mark or three-hour mark, that's when people start popping in. Yeah, I know. Where the fuck were all you like two <laughs> hours ago? It's always it's like it's um, every every stream. Even when you leave work, and I'm I'll, I'll stay on for another hour, I'm about to leave, and like three people show up. 
two people show up and like I don't then get I feel it. compelled I, to like I, stay I, for I a little bit. I don't get it. I, I I think it's me to be honest. I think they it see can't. it's past two and they're like, Oh work's probably gone. It's safe to hop on. No, it can't be because this was even happening before we did the Gangsters Boys. It's like why why? Even on Instagram it'll happen too. I'll go on live and then as I'm about to leave, people show up. Damn, Cortacular, Cort Cort are you playing Roblox right now? That's sick. Roblox. You you play Roblox? Yeah, of course I play. Um, Basically, half of all my income goes to Robux, which is the currency oh. in the Roblox universe. I need to look up footage of Roblox. I know you make blocks and you explode them. Right? I think. Yeah, and uh people have concerts too i think fallout boy did a concert on roblox can you make things honestly i think it's it's kind of like minecraft that That's... probably angered a lot of people saying that but i don't know anything about it except for when i worked at best buy kids were ready to kill each other over it Can you make shell toes? In, <laughs> yeah, you can make some loafers. <laughs> Bee Swarm Simulator is my jam, Valley Dwellers says. I have a level in Roblox. Is Jank. Oh, Jank Boys. I'm, I'm looking up all the, uh, the, the performers who have ever done a concert on Roblox. There's one called uh so weedy is that is that how you say your name so weedy it's s-a-w-e-t-i-e so weedy okay. um I, yeah. mariah carey um <laughs> mix them tune mix them tune i don't know who that is elton john apparently did it um wow. denzel curry i know i i know who he is um Lizzo. Lizzo did a show. That's sick. Okay. Um, I'm passing all the people I don't know, which I don't know who 24 Karat Golden is, but he looks like he goes hard. Um, Are these shows free? I believe so. And I believe you get um, you get like content, like items for attending the uh -huh. concert. Like, I think this is a paid for, like, obviously the artists are paid by Roblox for these concerts, but they're free. But the amount of people that join the servers and everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think they, they make more money off of that. Yeah. Um, 21 Pilots. Uh, who else? Who else? System over there. Lil Nas. Lil Nas was on there. Um, Lil Nas X. Yeah, dude. Uh, I like it when people, instead of uh, saying sweetie, they say sweaty. <laughs> oh, sweaty. Fordfoot saying so weedies. So weedies. So weedies nuts. <laughs> in your mouth i'll never forget uh it was my first job i was like 16 17 and it was at a sonic you know the fast food place mm -hmm. uh i was a car hop so i was on roller skates oh hell yeah and there was a guy who was like 19 there and he asked me like i didn't know this guy very good uh this was like the first week i was working there um he was like oh do you like dragons and I was like, oh, yeah, like, I, I love dragons. And he goes, how about me dragging these nuts across your face? And that was, like, my first interaction with this complete stranger. <laughs> Did you ask him, why would I, why would I want that? You should have kept it, like, so. I didn't, I, I never recovered from that, like, mentally. I'm still, like thinking about I it. Wake, yeah, I wake up in a cold sweat, like, pretty often about it, not going to lie. 
I'm often thinking about like, do I want? Dude, do, do we I need to start that? streaming past two? We're at six people now. Fuck you guys. God, I hate this. <laughs> we were done. <laughs> Warwick, this is how we do it. Okay, we start. This is how we do it from now on, Warwick. We start the stream at 12, but we just leave it on. We don't have to like hang out or anything. anything. And then at two, that's when we come in. <laughs> Imagine me dragging my nuts across your face. Yep, there it is. Oh, they clip, they uh, clip it. Jesse's first. saying, do you listen to Imagine Dragons? That's how I heard that joke. I I, I know of Imagine Dragons, but I'm not. Uh, I think the only song I know from them is that Sail song. Um, Sail! But, uh, no. Uh, the way I heard that joke was a 19-year-old abused me <laughs> while in uniform on roller skates. You should have sued him. Yeah. Where is my Erwin sleeping stream? You should do that. I'll do it tonight <laughs> if you like. I come in in the middle of the night with like milk and cookies and leave them by your <laughs> by your dresser. Yeah. I'll wake up and then say that Santa was here. Santa was here. <laughs> yeah, I, I half eat carrots and I leave like hoof prints all over the walls. Oh, uh, do you know we should all we should like build like this uh we could build like a storyline where uh, you're just you're doing it to abuse me. Where you, you you sit down, you bait the uh, the cookies and milk, and then I wake up, and then you get mad at me because I woke up. So you should be <laughs> sleeping right now. What's your favorite type of cookie? <laughs> uh, I would say red. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like red velvet or like... <laughs> no, no, I was, I was, I was yeah, I, was I know, I know. Call back I to know. the oh, what this is my favorite? Oh, sugar cookies. It's gotta be them sugar cookies. I'm a, I'm a sucker for Snickerdoodle. So if you ever, that's good too. If you ever see me out in the wild, that is good too. And you have a Snickerdoodle, watch out. A, yeah, like <laughs> gonna get caught. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go for those hands. <laughs> Opinions Opinion on ice, ice spice. spice. <laughs> I've not heard of such a thing. Do you know, you ice, know spice? ice spice? No. Dude, come on. She was the most iconic spice girl. Oh, ice spice. Are you still thinking cookies? Yeah. That's not cookies? No. Ice spice was the Asian one? I, dude, I think you'd like Ice Spice. She's very pretty. The fuck is Ice Spice? Oh, she's do not a, a Spice Girl. Quick, quick, do a quick Google. I know, I just yeah, did. It's not, it's, she's not a Spice Girl, <laughs> but she's a she's a rapper. Uh, okay, check yeah, her out. yeah, she's cool looking. She looks cool. She looks cool. I don't know if I can handle it. I think I'd like to, but it. She she's like on the level of uh, Doja Cat. Like I want to hang out, oh but God. that's too I would, much. I, I think would, yeah, too, like, she's too much. I can't I, keep up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> I would I would love to just dance with Doja Cat, but I don't I don't think that reality will ever happen. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the closest thing, the only thing that's gonna happen is that we're gonna we're gonna uh uh lock eyes for like just uh, that half a second and then that's it mm. that's the only interaction that's ever gonna happen if if uh if we were in the same when she room. went to that when she went to that uh it was like a fashion week thing in like france where she was wearing like a suit of armor with a fucking claymore i was just like wow <laughs> yeah. you just are you're everything aren't you <laughs> yeah. i like the other one she did where she's wearing those red rubies those red gems on oh her yeah face. that's Fuck. super crazy I wonder how many hours it took to get that like all set up. Um, Jesse saying animal style. Yeah, I would. I would let her animal style me for sure. Huh. 
that is yeah, that is something to think about, isn't it? You know what? I that I might I might let go of my uh, reservations. Yeah. Possibly. How was uh how was dinner with the fam on Thursday? Was it good? Oh yeah, it, it was good. Yeah, it was really good uh catching up. It was with our cousin. My brother and my brother and I went to visit or had dinner with my, our cousin. It was good to catch up. What'd you end up eating? We had Indian food. So we had the there's like they have like this fried chicken that is, has like a rye it's like a, some red type of red dye in it. I forgot what that I forgot what the, I don't know the names of the dishes, but they were all good though. The curry stuff, chicken. It's mostly chicken and rice. It was in torrents. I ate a lot of Indian food growing up. What's that fried one called? It was like an appetizer. Fried one? Are you talking about like uh? Fuck, what are they called? The, the ones that are like triangle and they're like almost like balls, right? Ah, they look like strips. These ones look like straight up chicken oh, strips. strips. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and they're and red. Eating them? Okay. Fried Indian food. Let's look. Let's look this up. I don't want to say any words because I don't want to. I don't want to be wrong. Yeah, because yeah, I thought you were talking about a samosa. But oh yeah, saying, oh so it was a samosa. Those we had those two. Sorry, yeah, we did have those two. But there was also there was this also like fried strip chicken. Fried strip chicken. I don't think I've ever had that. It's Maybe they good. just do that. It's just, it's like an Indian version of fried chicken strips. <laughs> Some tendies. Yeah, I think we can get wings for dinner tonight. Sounds fucking good. Oh, hell yeah, wing stop. Juliana won't do it. She says it's too salty, and that's why I love it. Where are you guys going? I don't know. Oh. We haven't fought about it yet. You haven't fought about it yet? Yeah, we haven't fought about it yet. Anytime we ever have to decide to eat somewhere, it's it's, it's not a discussion, it's a fight. I, You know what? I think that's, even with friends, I I don't want to be a part of it that decision making <laughs> for food it's like someone just fucking pick it and then just and I do just it. show up yeah yeah because they're they're gonna want something that i didn't pick and i'm gonna pick something that they they wasn't their initial idea but it's fucking food you can pick something that tastes good in any restaurant right if it's a good yeah. restaurant i'll never forget uh when you came over to my place and we went to that pizza spot next next door, oh, and yeah. you were still doing the vegetarian thing at that time, and we specifically were like, "All right, cool, like we'll go here because you can make a personal pizza and you can make a vegan, and like we don't have to worry about anything." And I watched him cut our pizza, the meat pizza, and then he takes the same cutter and then cuts your pizza. And like I was like, I was trying not to look at you because I didn't know if you noticed or if it was like I didn't want to be the guy to be like, uh, excuse me, but um, but yeah, I was like this guy. No, that was fine. I mean, what am I gonna do? Yeah, exactly. Tell him to cut it again. You or tell you, him to make you, it again. You wanted the pepperoni grease on there. Yeah, it did. Don't yeah, lie. It snitch, so. Oh, Quark's uh, Quark's connection dropped. What were our opinions on Ice Spice? We we like we like Ice Spice. Ice Spice for president. I spice for a price incident. I spy, I spice with my little eye. <laughs> my little eye getting big eye. Would you use napkins to drench the oils out of that? Za? 
no, I wasn't that health conscious. I was eating pizza, so. Sometimes I would do that, but not all the time. Do you ever uh, use Fuck napkins that. to? Uh, you got to keep the oil on the pizza, my guy. Like, that's that's the best part of the pizza. Yeah, the oil, like, if the oil, uh, depending on how hot it is, it's, like, it's still kind of cooking the pizza when you leave it on. So it's, like, it stays hot. And isn't that what cooking is, Warwick? Just making things hot? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I'm i particularly a fan of New York-style pizza. If I have to fold my slice, uh, that is good. I want to do that. I want large slices. And I don't want it to be too doughy, but I do want there to be substantial bread. I do want to chew, but I don't want it to be all I do. I do like crisp bread on pizza. Well, Borfa should know about pizza. Yeah. Apparently the water there is what makes their pizza so good. Isn't that right, Bird Fuzz? <sighs> that's what they all, that's, you know, they always say that, huh? They do. And it's I think it's because New York gets all its water from like upstate, which there's like mountains and like apparently it's like really fresh, good, clean, like tap water. Th then why wouldn't the pizza upstate be better then? Or like how about in Maine? It's all like the same water. It's all the same water, right? Uh well I, yeah I see what you mean like it's Maine too other, high <laughs> other states probably take from the same water source right yeah or Canada like wouldn't Canada have I recently discovered it's very simple but fuck uh it's called a Seattle dog and basically it's just a all beef hot dog that's been uh they cut it down the center and they fry it uh on a grill on both sides so it gets a little bit charred not too bad but just to add a little bit of flavor. And you take Philadelphia cream cheese on the bun oh. with grilled saute onions with uh, a little bit of jalapeno. And I was like, dude, this so looks good. phenomenal. That does sound good. That indeed does sound good. Fucking love cream cheese. Borfa says, hey, forget about it. Gotta get a New York slice. Two dollar slices. The Hudson River adds some nice natural flavor. Flavor. The flavor of what? Like moose, moose caca. <laughs> just think about it. all that water that we drink. Just like it, like it touched caca. Mm -hmm. Everyone's That's why caca. Some people of don't all history. in the ocean. Some people are like, no, there's tons of shit in that water. Yeah. And they're not wrong. Like, there's dinosaur caca. There's remnants of that. Kaka. Yeah. Speaking of forget about it, you've been to what's that uh that pizza place in Long Beach that has forget about it on top? Oh, they're saying. Oh yeah, yeah, you're what the, the one who showed that? me that spot. Um, what about him? I wanted to show it to Board Fuzz. So you need the name or what? I, w I just want to show him the picture of the forget about it sign. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me see if I can find it really quick. Valentino's? Is it that? No, I like Valentino's. It's definitely not Valentino's. Uh, what the fuck was it called? It's literally called forget about it. <laughs> no, it can't be. It's in Long Beach. Yeah, here. here. Let me, let me, no, PCH. Let me a quick, uh, oh, little, yeah, I remember little PCH. little goggle right there. I told you about that um, when I was in Arizona. I, that restaurant I, I found where uh, um, the logo, it was a chicago sandwich shop and it was a mobster and instead of holding a tommy gun he was holding a sub like <laughs> shooting it in a trench that's coat. funny and i was like that's so fucking sick <laughs> did, did that inspire the the english warrior thing no i actually wrote that before that but definitely oh, um i 
I, I might have took, I think I took a photo of it. It's called Big E Pizza. Yeah. That's the yeah, name of the place. It. Big E Pizza. And oh, their pizza looks pretty decent. Not gonna lie. Um, it, it's I greasy. Like, I it liked it. Greasy. I did like it. I like the pizza. It is, it, this is a wet pizza work. <laughs> if you like wet pizza. But yeah, they have a giant light up sign that just says, forget about it. Yeah, I'll show it. Big E Pizza um, in Long Beach, California. Uh, on PCH. Yeah. Dirty Donnie's was not heavily inspired by Big E P Pizza, but you know what? Like, we'll definitely we'll give some credit towards it. Inspiring it now. Of course, I could have said in Ireland we have a pizza shop called Apache Pizza. Apache pizza. Yeah, you know the Hell natives. The natives the natives uh, invented pizza before the Italians did. Yeah. Use the restroom, we'll be right back. All right. Borfa, do you like wet pizza? Because this biggie pizza is a wet. The logo is a bison now. Oh yeah, you know what? I think you did share images of the old logo on the disc on the Ink and Drink Discord. <laughs> used to be a guy, used to be a guy in a headdress, yeah. I love all pizza, no discrimination except pineapple. Cork's very proud of it. <laughs> okay. I I can eat pineapple on pizza if the pizza is brand new. I'm not into it. My parents love that pineapple on pizza though, so I leave that stuff alone. Leave it for them. But then they'll like they'll only eat a certain amount of of that pizza and then they'll mention to me later on during the day later on in the day like hey we, we have pizza still it's like yeah i don't want to eat that one how do you get your pizza cork what toppings are you you usually going for Um, yeah, I'm kind of confused about these lines. Okay, I think this one's the top. Let's send this. Oh, shit, I forgot to write out the baby's part on the bottom here. I'll eat as long as it ain't on the floor. Ironically, the one near me is staffed entirely by Indians. I'll eat as long as it's in and on the floor. Partial to Hawaiian, though. See, he does like it. So, Cork does like it. People are different. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a fan Indians. of Hawaiian. Yeah, I, mean, I love they... pineapple, too. And that's the thing. I love pineapple, and I'm still not a fan of Hawaiian pizza. Yeah, I can only eat it if it's hot. But I'll tolerate eating it when it even when it's hot. I I think pineapple like hot is not good. Pineapple <laughs> has to be cold out of the fridge for me to enjoy it. Uh in Portland there's a spot called Sizzle Pie that I used to go to. That makes some pretty damn good pizza. Sizzle Large pie. big old boy slices. I'm not a fan of green olives, but I do. I can fuck with artichoke hearts. I can do that. Yeah, I'm talking about ice spice. Do you like artichoke hearts and green olives? I don't know. Sometimes those hearts get spiky, though. There's a uh, spot near me called Brewery X, 
and uh, they do pizza, and they have a buffalo chicken pizza that is so fucking good. That does sound good. Yeah, let me let me see if I can find a photo. You bastards! I forgot. Copy image. I can't do images in the chat, right? I have to drop it in the Discord, probably. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could put a link to the image, right? Uh, I guess. There's the link, I guess. I don't know if anybody knows to go to the to the Discord. Is that something we should mention all the time? No, it's a secret. secret. Okay, don't go. Don't go there. But yeah, that that brewery is really sick, and I'm really fortunate because a lot of uh, friends I grew up with ended up getting jobs there. So uh, hmm. I'll roll through and. Uh, They'll, a lot of the times they try to give me like discounts and I have to tell them not to because it's, it'll start getting absurd. But um, They're still there? But yeah. What? Do you, your friends that work there? Oh, yeah. I, I have like, I think it's like four or five friends. And it's funny because a lot of them weren't friends with each other. There were people I met randomly like through life or through school. Oh, yeah. And they ended up getting jobs at breweries and they all ended up working at the same brewery. Oh, so. That's funny. How long did you live? Did you lived over there. Uh, I've basically lived in the same area my entire life. Unfortunately, um, oh, yeah. I haven't really moved around a whole lot. Like the city I was born and spent the first like twelve years of my life was Orange, California, and then I moved to Santa Ana, which was like twenty minutes away from there. Oh, right. And then i moved to fullerton which is 20 minutes the opposite direction oh so oh yeah, yeah um yeah so i've i've lived in the same county like my whole life and uh i'll probably move out of california at some point but with work and everything right, right. now like i have no idea Let's just hope Vile blows up and then I can move to the middle of nowhere where it's like dirt cheap and I can just make a make a living off of uh, royalties. That is uh, very ambitious. It might take 10 think... years to do that. I think if we, we could just like to the philippines and then that money is going to go a lot further <laughs> yeah we could do that i do like the idea of like living in the middle of nowhere and some so do i if your neighbors if are two hours away. i ever get good money and i can afford just to buy a few acres of land and just put some fucking some tiny homes on it yeah you're more than welcome to fucking just live on an acre somewhere just imagine you get to wake up and like just be naked and no one's yeah. gonna fucking see Set up an OnlyFans house. You know, Doug, do you, are you familiar with Doug Stanhope? No. Comedian. He's that. a comedian. Uh, friends with uh, friends with a bunch of other comedians, but he, I forgot what state he lives in, but uh, the place that he did, that he does live at, he, he bought a bunch of houses. Like, just imagine he bought a bunch of houses in that residential area. Mm -hmm. So all of it's his. Like his name, he doesn't get bothered by neighbors because he is his own neighbor. <laughs> That's sick. Oh yeah, just stay in the guest house. Oh yeah, is it in the back? No, it's the house right next door. <laughs> yeah, that would be sweet. We were joking at work because the the main production site for the company I work for is in Illinois, and the houses are like you can get a crazy house for like dirt cheap for like 150k. And, and it's because it's the middle of fucking nowhere. 
and all my coworkers, we joke around all the time about how we should all just move out there and just buy a whole cul-de-sac. You could. So the entire neighborhood is just your homies. You totally could. And then since we live with like a uh, uh, convenient delivery, you can have everything delivered. Groceries, right? Yeah, Jesse's saying start a, com- a commune. I'll join. Fuck yeah. I've al- I feel like I've always, like, I was always destined to have a cult. And this might be a good start. You were destined? Yeah. I was destined. I like the idea of having just a workhouse, but then that's also taking another home off the market. Sad face. Um, If I remember correctly, uh, the studio that worked on uh rango the that it's uh it's a nickel nickelodeon produced film with johnny depp where he plays like a lizard and it's a western yeah um i believe that entire film was worked out of a uh a house in beverly hills if i remember correctly it oh. was the creative director or whatever he doesn't like working in offices so they literally just turned a home into a studio so everybody had like a room in the house and they basically got to like work and like they used the kitchen as like a, you know, common space. And, um, they would have Johnny Depp and like people who were voice acting, come and do their parts there. They had an area in the garage where they would have them like act out scenes. So then they could better understand and anim- animate like how the characters are going to be moving and doing stuff. It was really cool. You ever been inside of a house in Beverly Hills? <laughs> Quirktacular. I've always wanted my wife to be my sister wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, Valley Joy saying, I'm wondering what zoning issues there are with that. I don't think there is any because why would you, I don't feel like you would need to. Yeah, if you like, own no, it. No, this is, yeah, like I, it's, you'd still call it a house. It's still a house, but you just have people over and they work out of it i i don't know if there's anything legally wrong with that are our houses like zoned you know how when you w- walk into a business and there's a maximum occupancy <laughs> yeah do houses I have maximum know. occupancies i have no idea let me look that i up. don't think so i don't think so The California Department of Fair Employment and Housing uses what is known as the two plus one formula, which permits two people to occupy each bedroom with one additional person in the living space. Five people may reside in a two bedroom unit. Oh, so there is. But that's for living. You know what I mean? It's it's not like because in a restaurant, nobody lives there. Like, so I'm wondering if there's just a number of people that are allowed to legally be in one house at one time have 80 people like partying in your house or is that because that's clearly like a fire hazard right having that many oh, people, it's like... be. yeah see jesse's saying i think that's a business thing for safety yeah for fire safety yeah yeah damn what i would do for uh for some chocolate babies for some lumpies that might this could be a uh, uh, a sea story where lumpies changes its name or has well, to like I'm, go back I'm not sure on if the, you remember I, I can go ahead and say this because it's not like a big spoiler but there is a parade scene later on at some point oh, yeah. with uh, the balloon characters we could have the mascot for lumpies Oh yeah! Oh my Which... god! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Do you want to draw a? Do you want to draw a chocolate baby? <laughs> uh, I, I Thanks, would. Philip. Thanks, Philip McVan, <laughs> for shoehorning us into this. I mean, we could, I, I I could white it out and. <laughs> <laughs> oh man.
<laughs> what is a chocolate baby? <laughs> what does that even look like? Do you remember when I told you uh, there was that panel of Jay and the line was fucking comma? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I don't really want to put, I put, if I put, what was it? Damn, goddamn kids. Yeah. And uh, I was like, yeah, that's, that was probably the safer move. That's how I feel right now about lumpies. <laughs> I mean, we could just take out the, the, the babies. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, if you're going to do it, do it digitally, but part of me wants to leave it in there. And then the other part of me likes the idea that some collector someday will, will get to own the original mistake. Yeah. I mean, it's only racist if, if you think about it that way. <laughs> Jesse's saying you can call them that and have the mascot look nothing like it. Might make it more funny like a horse or a cat. Or a duck. Remember, we were kind of playing with that duck motif. Quirktacular saying my wife just called me gay for listening to your stream. <laughs> She's not wrong, bud. Not wrong. My wife. Ooh la la. Did you watch the new movie? No, I did not. <laughs> did you? No. Woo woo wowie. We just watched, about to watch the whole page finish. That's how we do it. Isn't that crazy? We need more uh, four page or four panel pages. Yeah. <laughs> or what do you mean? I've been giving you single panel pages. Like yeah, that's true. Yeah, let's just do that. <laughs> Add all these pages. I'll edit down your story just to one page. Oh, one one splash. Yeah. Per page. Yeah. The next the next panel the next page is three panels. Yeah, I think you'll be able to burn through the next couple of pages relatively I so. fast. I hope so. I gotta read them again. They kind of. I mean, I, I read it a few times. And then forgot all about it every fucking time. It's and not then, a good script. It's not memorable. It's okay. I get it. I mean, I remember moments in the script. I just don't know when those things happened. Yeah, I'm using... Uh, I'm nearing the end of the portfolio that I'm holding all of these pages. Isn't so, that crazy? That's so crazy. The portfolio holds uh, 48 uh, sheets. And this is page 40. Ooh, page 47. I'm one more page done. If you guys want the, uh, the tease out for what that last page is for the portfolio, not the story. There's a, a little glimpse of Warwick's panel ruling that's of any worth so one for one yeah but this is it like this is the last time you're gonna see something like this i mean i guess if you watch the stream again you can see it but this is gonna get erased <laughs> <laughs> that's you what i did me to draw them. i know but then that's before we got i had the printer now i can just print them Honestly, going digital is for sure. Look going. how fast I got. You know I, mean? I, I got this, the pencils done last night. Although I did want to, I wanted to balance it out where I got this page done and then worked on uh, layouts for another book. I, mm -hmm. I didn't get to it. I was just like thinking about it. As I was drawing this, I was also thinking about the other thing, which I sh shouldn't do that. I can only focus on this thing. But I mean, I figured out that uh, to have the first shot kind of be the exposition shot which i guess it is right because he's walking in a different area 
and then ha but have the uh the establishing shot go all the way past uh towards the edge of the page mm -hmm. and then the uh sequential page uh damn it i can't talk the sequential panels be the same size just to further that show that this is happening right after the next panel and then having that poignant moment where jay is about to take a bite And then uh, the next page of him, uh, hopefully, I hope, Warwick, I don't know about you, but I'm hoping that Jay enjoys his lumpies. But I, I guess time honestly, will tell. Honestly, it's probably going to be the best bite of anything he's ever had. And uh, I don't know, I don't want to hint at anything, but if that's the last page <laughs> of the portfolio, that might be the last page of the uh, story. What if it ended at that? Like, mm, what a great candy. <laughs> what a great treat. Catch you next month. <laughs> right. That was Jesse's, it. Uh, Jesse's leaving. Thanks for having wow. me. Wow. Appreciate it. Did you ever have you ever experienced that? See you, Jesse. Did you ever experience Jesse leaving? <laughs> this is the first, and it's been pretty hard. Not gonna lie. All right. He'll be back next Thursday. I hope he does. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, nope, never again. I'm done with this. You know what's funny is that he got the soundboard happening, and then but we had two guests. <laughs> <laughs> He's being very respectful by not playing the soundboard during the guest time. We should have a guest next time. Soba comes on. We'll we'll tell we'll we won't tell him that there'll be a soundboard, and we'll have soundboard being controlled by Jesse the whole time. Um, um, that, uh, yeah, I'm hoping for that too. I'm hoping for the soundboard to be this regular thing so that when guests do come on, they're kind of already expecting it. But yeah, that's the thing that we'll have to initiate. There's one podcast that has two soundboards by two different people at the same time, if you can believe that. Damn dueling soundboards? That's yeah. sick. And a host that's trying to talk on top of all of that with a guest. So it's a guest talking to a host and you have two guys in the back doing doing soundboard, sound drops at the same time. That's uh, Tim Heidecker's podcast. Even when I'm done with a page like this work on, on stream, I'll, I'll still spend another 30 minutes adding... Yeah, I imagine once it's all done, you kind of do one last look and you add the finishing touches, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's more like textural stuff or accent stuff or filling in the uh, spot blacks like the first panel needs to be filled up. I just don't want to pull out the uh, the ink. So will do it. What are you getting into today? Um, I still have to hit the gym today, so I'll probably do that pretty soon. And then, um, what else? What are you gonna do at the gym? I'm um, today's chest day, so I'm probably gonna do some like uh, bench press stuff. But I'll probably do it with some dumbbells. And how, then, how much do you bench? Oh, dumbbells. Okay. Uh, I have no idea what my max is. I know I, I know I can bench a plate multiple times, which is 135 pounds. But... Oof. Um, I want to get to two plates, which is two twenty-five. There's like a weird calculator that, so I can when I did the math, because I can, I can bench the one thirty-five like eight or nine times. So saying my max should be one eighty, but I've yet to actually try that. But I don't know. I'll get there. Hell yeah, that's what I want to do too. I just want to bulk up. Don't you just want to bulk up? I wish That's I could. That's all I'm doing, bud. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> I just want to fucking bulk. 
I've, I've not have not been doing any cardio. I've just been fucking yeah. lifting. I mean, I would not mind being cut, but like a cut, bulked up body. But the arms, so, hell so yeah. He, he, oh. Here's the thing, Erwin. All I've been doing is lifting, and I'm down 15 pounds. Oh wow, really? Oh. Yeah. How many reps do so, you do? Uh, I I usually I go until I'm tired. It's not really oh very like a, good like a set number. I I go until like I feel like my arms are on fire. Do you ever follow any like uh, uh I guess I shouldn't say that, but there's like a f- bunch of like hot chicks that that lift. Oh, like dude, that. I I think didn't we talk about this? Oh, Recently, we did. I, oh, I, I, I'm just, super, I I'm getting really that. into chicks that are like ripped, like. Girls with big arms, I'm I'm there. Oh, God. It's fucking hot. I just I, I feel safe. Greena, Greena, sir, is it safe to show these people? I mean, they're on Instagram. Oh wait, hold on. Let me show her arms though. Quartacular is saying, if you want to get big, drink insane amount of milk, and deadlift <laughs> overhead press three times a week. <laughs> I wish I could. Yeah. There's Rena Serena, lean, lean beef patty. That's another one. Fuck yeah, those are some nice arms. This one's lean beef patty. The next one I'm showing. It's so sick. Like, think about it. You can like walk down alleyways and not have to be the hero when you have a partner like that. I know you can walk behind her say. and then like yeah. wait for her to like punch the people's heads and <laughs> can you do it? <laughs> There's her and then uh, Monica. Oh, Monica dude, yeah, I, I follow this chick. Yeah, yeah God, she's hot. She's so hot. <laughs> she's here too. She's Is in she? Costa Mesa. Yeah, because she because she showed off her PO box. It's like, hey, you can send me stuff. I'm like, Costa Mesa. I could go there, and then you started, like, stalking. (laughs) Oh, man. Monica Granda? A Granda? I just want to punch it. I want to punch that arm. (laughs) (laughs) I see them doing this stuff and I can only think about how many hernias I would <laughs> I would make. Do you make hernias or do hernias happen to you? How do hernias happen? I, I don't know. You don't make them, do you? They just happen to you. We should do this for a full stream, just like watch hot hot chicks hot lifting. <laughs> I want them to deadlift me. I'm playing. That's my uh, uh, call to action. Is, uh, <laughs> feel free to deadlift me. I watched. Right, on that note, I think I'm a. Uh, I'm gonna disappear. All right, work. This well, is like the longest you've been on. Oh yeah. No, we we. Dude, we did Kevin, longer? We, were, we did Oh, four, yeah, we did. Midnight, dude. Yeah. We with Kevin for four that was the hours. best, one of the best episodes, too, and it's fucking yeah. fucked up. Um, all right. So, yeah, I'm Audi. I will talk to you soon, and for sure, I'll be on Thursday with you. So, all right, Warwick. Take it easy. All right. See you later. Bye, guys. See you. There goes Warwick Walker, writer of this book, Vile. Mini series. The first issue is 64 pages. Uh, if you were here earlier, he mentioned some other projects he's working on with uh, our other friends, and I'm excited to see that. He mentioned Soba. I mean, Soba on, on any book is already going to be good. And then with these two people, people that I know, that's going to make it a better experience. Clark says I literally I literally put on 50 kilograms this way and walked around with an erection like for a years. I used to live in Mission Viejo. Ew. 
Valley Dweller died in Fortnite while typing. Dear Lord, I hope you can come back. Speedy recovery. I just do, uh, I've been doing these, um, I don't know what you call it, but I was just like working on my body with, with no weights, just like repetition of, of movement, just with the forearms. I'm not lying. I'm just working at the forearms and I'll just have my arms straight out, uh, face forward, uh, uh, flat, kind of like flying like Superman. And then I'll just start, uh, um, doing this open, closing my, my hand and I'll do like 20 this way and then I'll turn my hand this way do 20 of those and then turn my hand up to 20 of those just to get just to work out those forearms I want to know Soba's secret identity it's been mentioned before I don't know how much he, he wants that revealed I kind of felt when I did mention it, um, that, um, I don't know if there's a pushback, but he kind of felt a little, a little apprehensive, like, don't touch that part. So, so I kind of, I let it go. But, you know, I, I, if you do, uh, if you do go back, Quark, if you do go back to the, in general, and you scroll back from, recent messages to the back you will see me asking the the discord group if anybody realized it from before because we did uh quartacular and i think you probably were uh here in the beginning of uh the early days of the early days of discord uh and the early days of drawing online with ink and drink uh we did we did meet sobacor before he was Sobacore. I have been developing the world's first Irish martial art. What is that called? What do you call that? Uh, oh, also, Cork, I... I did, you know what? Uh, when I was uh, taking a break from this page i did draw one panel of the uh, exquisite corpse comic i did one panel on my page i'm not going to show it off but i just wanted to let you know that i am currently working on it hopefully i can get something done next week or uh work on something next week and then what else is there yeah i think that's it i'm still trying to figure out like how to progress uh the story from the page you gave me, but it's very open. Maybe the punchline is the name of the, the Irish martial art. Kind of makes me want to go. You want to go through a, a TikTok stream? If I don't play vi audio, I think that might be okay. You can get a glimpse of what comes up on my uh, TikTok or you page. Um, some stuff kind of, you know, I don't like punching down, but some stuff does pop up, pop up on my for you page. Like this, something like this. I don't know why this is on my for you page. But I, I don't want, I don't like the dancing, so we'll, this guy, I'll have him, yeah. He's a keeper, like watching his videos. When his wife is running errands and I'm deep in his merry guts, same way name, I, I don't get it. Oh, also, there's this, uh, let's see if, if this pops up, there's this brand new trend of, uh, a new meme of uh, a power lifter. I forgot. It's not Mark Irons. What the hell is his name? There's this meme using this power lifter guy. 
this popular powerlifter guy too, but um, what they're doing now is taking footage of him on his, I don't know, photo shoots and then putting text on top of it. Let's see. The animals. Animals are cute, but not for TikTok. It's okay on Instagram. And obviously they're not going to show that meme that I always see. Oh, shit. Look at that. You're going to break it. So stupid. And people. People are different. No animals. No creativity. No animals. The animals always pop up. Skits, no. No. Video games, no. Damn, the TikTok sauce is not great. Not that great of a stream. Of a TikTok stream. I guess I can... Let's pull this out. I guess I'll do the... You know what, let's just pull the bottle out of ink and start inking this. Spot blocks up top. Where is my brush? Pull out such a brush. Pull out, I'll let my phone run out of power. What did I miss? I was just doing some TikTok streaming for a little bit. It wasn't that great though. They never are when I'm trying to show off what's on my stream. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is show the whole page while I spot oh I gotta move that too give me a minute there you go this is what you want this is how I'd like to present such a present such a scene can I do this How's that to present such a, such a scene?
that's the thing with this. Oh, I forgot to drink my coffee. Using this super black speed ball. Check it up a bit. Get all the stuff that sits at the bottom. Make it mix in with everything. Then I would have opened it up such as yeah i think that's all i need wipe Spilled something. Hello? Hey. Who is this? Who popped in? Yeah. Hey, I did. Is that okay? Oh, that's fine. Totally fine. Yeah, I didn't have what the, uh, what's going on? How have you been? Long time no, no talk. Yeah, I, I still don't have a, um, I still don't have a tablet, which is, uh, it's pretty sad, pretty unfortunate. It's okay. But I haven't really had, been able to participate in the Wednesday night, which I, I do miss. Um, what, happened, what happened to your tablet? I'm still streaming, by the way, so just to let you know. I won't. Uh, I won't call out my address or anything. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> um, it just broke, man. When we moved places like six months ago, it, it just died a death, and it hasn't. Um, haven't been able to get a new one since. I keep buying other toys instead. Like I bought a synth recently. It was a pretty, pretty big spontaneous purchase. <laughs> oh, a what? A Cintiq? But I really should get a fucking iPad. A synth, like a synthesizer. Oh, are you doing? Yeah, music I got too? a core oh, mini log. It's uh, pretty fucking cool. Wow, how's that? Like, it's good. It's like if you want to make uh make like ray gun noises or like alien noises, pretty fun. It's pretty fun to mess around with. But uh, yeah, it's essentially it essentially took the place of an iPad in my life, which is uh that was the opportunity cost, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I've seen the I've seen the work the past like. Like Wednesdays, very very cool stuff. I like how creative you're getting with the backgrounds. Oh yeah, thanks. Yeah, a lot of them are. The recent ones have been suggestions from other people. Um, the yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but dude, the Funstone one was just something I was thinking of. Like, what else we could do besides the video game stuff? Although I have a bunch of video game stuff that we can always go back to. But yeah. Backgrounds have been fun to draw. I, um, I, uh, Philip hasn't uh, hasn't done any the past while, has he? Or uh, was I just usually he's fairly recognizable in the mix? He, yeah, he's always been in every drawing board. Um, the Flintstone, there like, is a was he in the uh, hmm. was he in the Shining one? Was he? Yes, he did the one that I remember. He drew on top of Jack Nicholson's head, that goopy face head. That's okay. Philip. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, I, I guess he didn't. He didn't go too wild of a Philip on that one. I don't know what else he did on the that. The man is full of surprises. <laughs> yeah. And but then I on the. Uh, always acts. 
on the uh, Punisher one, he he messed with the Punisher's face and arm. That was him. Fuck! I didn't even I didn't even recognize that. <laughs> mixing it up, he's mixing it up big time. Yeah, yeah I, I heard you mentioning the uh, the exquisitist. Yeah, I was. I'm. I'm. I had to overcome a great deal of shame from uh, not being on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> the exquisite corpse uh, <laughs> I, uh, I was, I was, I was thinking that you'd be upset with my turn in, turn out because I haven't even. I only drew one panel, and that's just a pencil. And I was like, okay, well, I, this is how I'm gonna lead in from the previous from Cartacular's page. I can just lead it in with with this character, which you know who it is, and you drew that character. And then yeah. I was thinking the next pa the next panel would be just. That's where I start taking off, and I still don't know what what to do. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. When, okay, when you were no. saying like, "Oh, maybe it's easier to see the page," and then I was like, "I was, I was like, that's a good idea, probably for every other situation." <laughs> yeah. Because uh, <laughs> it would, <laughs> I mean, it, it it would it would be so very wonky if everything was relied on the last panel because then my fear was that i don't know if it would ever yeah. happen but my fear was that what if someone redid a very similar scene based on that last panel with the previous page because they didn't see the previous page which i mean i don't know if that's oh, very, a hindrance very possible, yeah. but it might be too repetitive for for the reader but i like i like no, this I, I, I know too. what you're saying uh, yeah, but you're a you're a you're deep down the rabbit hole of art, man. <laughs> you're fucking you're you're hard in the paint. I do. I I think it is a good idea. I the only I actually thought a similar thing myself. Like, oh, people should see the page, but I didn't want to go changing the rules after I made a big deal of the initial thing. So I was like, oh, but now now it's kind of like I have I have Papa's blessing, so it's it's easier to go forth. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, uh, starting yeah. the, this project, though. Too. I I, I hope it's it's obviously going to take a, a long time to um yeah to do, but I I like I think everybody's super engaged with the group, so it'd be real cool to see what um what people produce by the end of it. Um, pretty excited about this TMNT thing, although I did vote for uh, the X Men. Which X Men? Oh. Uh. Uh. Uh, giant size, I think. Giant size, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, oh no, I, you know, whichever one had the most votes, that's the one I voted for. Remember when it was like TMNT had one more than X Men? Yeah, I voted for that the X Men to yeah. make them I, even. I did too. I voted for that giant size X Men as well. But I'm I'm not mad at the at yeah. TMNT though. Not to be honest, like I, I have tried a couple of times in the past to draw the turtles and I just couldn't like figure it out. Like I, I didn't obviously look at any reference, that probably was it problem, but like I was like, what the fuck is the point of these guys? So it'll be fun doing something kind of that I, you know, don't overly care about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the challenge too, is like how do you make something that you don't care about? How do you care about it enough to draw two pages and potentially two more pages? after that yeah i want to go get, i want to give them all like really big dick but i'm like is that too is that too on brand you know <laughs> just <laughs> too might obvious. Be. we were talking about that too <laughs> like what's the core take of this oh, gonna look like? <laughs> just dicks really dicks yeah how can i make this somehow about uh sex <laughs> <laughs> no i think it'd be a lot of fun i think it'd be really fun i think a lot of people uh uh you know, if they're maybe not like super confident about just randomly doing their own thing, it gives it a solid framework. Um, yeah. It's going to be cool. I hope so. What yeah, else you worked on at the moment, Derwin? Okay, so we're doing this vial, the TMNT, the, all the other projects on Ink and Drink. I am also working on two, two figures, two sculpts, one I have to do revisions oh. on. I can't, I would love to show it but i can't one one is revisions and then the other one i have to like start uh, a brand new sculpt i think i'll get to that uh the revisions is next week i'll get to that and then the sculpt i think i will also start in next month in april what else am i working? oh there's an 80 page comic that i'm doing the layout so i'm on page 
12, I believe. So working through that. Can you talk about that or is it hush hush? It's kind of hush hush. I can let you know like after the stream or okay. privately. Yeah. Um, but I can say that it's. I'm going to sell this to the highest bidder, by the way. It is, it is a project with someone with another artist and that artist is someone that I've worked with before. So I guess. Mike Mignola? Oh yeah, you got it. <laughs> yes. We're doing a brand new, uh, <laughs> all in one, baby. Doing a brand new Hellboy. It's all new, all different Hellboy. Starting it off from scratch. Brand new yeah, we're origin. taking it in a new direction. <laughs> yeah. Mike, uh, let me just uh, say two words to you here. Gangsters, boys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he loved the idea. He thought that it was a great idea that he wanted to restart Hellboy from the beginning. So Hellboy would potentially be the first gangster in, in America. The first American gangster. He's... Hellboy would then be the original <laughs> kingpin who started all the mobs. Everyone answered to him. It's just the story of Al Capone, but with Hellboy. That's kind of yeah. the goon read, really, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. Uh, oh, yeah, goon does have superstitions. Have you had... Oh, the goon is so good, man. I, fucking, yeah. I, love I stopped goon. reading it, but I was into it I, in the I... beginning. Yeah, same. I haven't actually, after maybe volume, like the seventh or eighth trade, I think I, if they, well, maybe it's lower than that. I probably, my imagination has fluffed that up, but I, I had a bunch of trades and then I kind of, I think uh, it started getting a little too kind of like heavy in like kind of romance and stuff. Like there was this thing of like, oh, the goon is like this, you know, he's like this beautiful monster and like women were like kind of, oh, I see something in you. And I was like, I just want to oh. see him punch zombies. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just want to, I just want to see that. Although I did get a Eric Powell's um, Ed Gain uh, book. Did you read that? No, I, I wanted to. I just haven't gotten it yet. It's good. It's a nice book. It's yeah. very nice. Uh, art's nice. And it's kind of it's pretty, obviously it's like a real story. So, you know, can't really praise the story too much, but it's pretty good. I liked it. You, uh, you reading anything good at the moment? I'm still reading Fist of the North Star. Oh, yeah, Valley Dwell's asking Moon Knight. I haven't gotten into any Moon Knight. I do like the uh, Sinkevich stuff that I've seen of Moon Knight. I'm currently reading Volume Which 6 of Fist, Fist of the North Star. Volume 6 is what I'm Oh, on. man, you've been reading Fist of the North Star. Yeah. I actually, I, I, I chatted with you uh, like after one of your streams, like, five months ago and you were reading fist of the north side then man yeah i love it's, that it's it's, it's such a, it's a quick read and there's a lot of it which i appreciate oh i'm also reading power bomb let's do a power bomb mm. i am oh, um, i'm halfway through the story and then my bookmark is uh steve mannion's fearless dawn one shot swimsuit edition if, oop, if you oh, don't Mannion. oh man he, you like steve Mannion? i love his artwork man he draws some very sexy ladies yeah yeah he does and the proportions are like kind of cartoony too but they're still hot yeah 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 it's it's what you want from a cartoon girl man yeah yeah i like his stuff he, he does re he's not on instagram though unfortunately he just has like a fan page or something like that or i think i follow like a hashtag oh i but, thought that was like him a, do you like, i don't maybe maybe i'm wrong but i could have sworn i like it's like it's a hashtag or something it's not actually his profile maybe i'm wrong i'm not the brightest um you know what i got recently that is actually a really cool book and you can get it for cheap enough i recommend the uh, simpsons treehouse of horror comics they're being like released as omnibus volumes uh -huh. and uh there's a lot of interesting uh artists and writers in the mix there like there's a story by mike allred um jeff darrow has like a pinup in it like all from like the fucking early thousands uh oh man there's like loads of dudes in it that it's kind of like oh fuck it's like it's a real interesting uh read quite nice it's cool you have to look into that uh, comic cave did uh a feature on them a while back. Yeah, there's a, I think there's like a. Oh, Steve Mannion does have a fucking uh, page. Sorry, sorry, to, yeah. <laughs> he does have a page. Okay, I'm stupid. 
I know there's a, a Jeff Darrow uh, double splash pinup on in that um, Simpsons book. Yeah, it's pretty so nice. cool. It's yeah. really cool. Um, I, I recommend it. It's like it's pretty cheap and it's like a big chunky hardback and like a slip cover. And it's like it's really nice. It's a really nice book. I had a, a, quite a bit of fun reading it. Like, um, have you ever uh, have you read PTSD Radio? No, were you mentioning that? Someone else mentioned mm. that as well. It's cool. It's really cool. It's good. Uh, it's good horror comics. It's manga, right? It's about like a fucking yeah. It's about like a. It's like about a hair demon haunting people. Uh, it, it's it's very good. It's genuinely like some creepy comics. Wow. What makes it creepy? Warwick was trying to figure out how to write a horror story comic book form. Like, do you have any? Uh, do you know what? Uh, like my uh, like my tastes are like I like the Lovecraft cosmic horror, not knowing what exactly is is the problem type stuff. So, uh, like, I think it, I think it's like horror and comedy. I've actually been thinking about this a lot lately because I've been reading a lot of like horror comics, like Etho and stuff like that. And I think horror and comedy are the same thing um like they both elicit like a primal reaction and they're based on um being like misled like it's all about the the shock of the unexpected and i think mm -hmm. the best horror in my opinion is like the mundane uh contrasted with the the grotesque or the unsettling so like in that ptsd radio for example there's like scenes where people are like on trains and they look at their reflections and their faces like they might just be bald with a weird, creepy smile or like, you know, it's like a, a kid getting bullied and he like breaks his own hand on the floor to like stop the bullies. And it's just like, it's like this really kind of like mundane, normal situation. And then it's like this kind of like weird, sick, grotesque kind of like payoff. And it's like exactly like a joke. It's like you do the setup, which is meant to be like, I don't know, like, oh, you know, I love... I love three-year-olds and then it's like the the misdirect is like oh fucking them or whatever it's like the same thing it's like oh it's just like a girl going to work on a train and she's like having a fight with her mom and then it's like oh fuck her fucking pussy has eyeballs in it <laughs> it's like oh that makes me feel weird you know i think i think that's where good horror comes from is there is this a single single book story or is this a uh ongoing series uh so like at the moment they've released two volumes and there's a third volume coming out in may oh, but as okay. far as i know basically it's like an existing series and as far i think ptsd radio is the first of uh i can't remember his name makiyama or something that his series being translated into english everything else has just been like in japanese up until now oh, and okay. uh i think i think it's just three volumes so this one coming out in may should kind of finish the story but actually the cool and actually i think that's another thing about horror it's like it should have like a solid conceptual backbone uh i think that's the other ingredient that makes it good it's like conceptual backbone where it's like okay this is the actual story and then each scene is like a microcosm of like the same mm. structure of a joke like this is what's normal and this is why it's fucked up this is what's normal that's why it's fucked up and that's the horror fans are just like they're just like dopamine junkies. It's like, I just want a scene after a scene after a scene after a scene that makes me feel weird and uncomfortable. But ultimately, you know, it's like superheroes. It has to make sense, like overall. It has to be like, okay, I understand why those scenes happen. But yeah, the story in it is pretty cool. It's pretty tight, like. And it's uh, one thing that I think you might appreciate as a kind of a comic fetishist is uh, the story is done completely non-linearly. So like you just get like, the way it starts is like with these two, two to three page chapters that are just like vignettes. It's like this character, this character, this character, and it feels completely unrelated. They're just like weird little, they're like one liners, you know, and then slowly they merge together. The characters actually haven't met each other in any sense, but it's like the overarching idea of what's kind of going on here is being revealed to you through these different and you put it together yourself. It's pretty good. I, I'd recommend wow. it. I, I really like it. Yeah, it sounds good. Is I'll have to watch. Uh, I'll have to watch YouTube uh, reviews on it. Uh, Valley Dweller says I just watched Banshees of even Shinin or whatever. I don't. Know. In your industry, in yeah. Daily do YouTube. 
Actually, I that that reminds me. I have a bug to bear. Uh, not one person wished me a happy St. Patrick's Day. Not oh dear lord! Well, we, just, we don't want to be uh, uh, seen as racist. I was gonna make a scene, but I I just wanted to. <laughs> you should have done it. You should have called us all out for it. <laughs> you bastards! You fucking bastards! <laughs> it's like fucking angry voice message in the chat. I think that reminds me when Kevin when Kevin mentioned that I colored your I colored your screen name green. I totally did not even that did not even register. I'm like, oh fuck, because I was trying to think opposites. Because Sean was red for some reason. Oh, because Sean was red because he's the guy that does the recording. So when you see him, you know that he's the guy that records uh, Oh, cool. Records yeah, the audio. Oh, so then I was think, trying to think of like, uh, what do you call it? I was thinking of complementary colors, right? In the yeah, yeah. in the color wheel. It's like, well, if he's red, then the other person that gets next, that net that will get designated next has to be green. Lo and behold, you know what, it was you. <laughs> I'm just, I do just, you believe, just do you believe, believe what I just said? Is that the only it? other lad with Irish blood? And you have to put us in a box together. Did you notice that? Oh, that's right. I did, didn't I? Ah, uh, I was. You know what? I was. I was. I thought the racism thing. I thought that was just a bit of a joke. But uh, I don't know. It's not looking good for you, buddy. Shit. <laughs> it's, it's like, I should have stopped the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Better get cancelled. <laughs> 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 yeah, green's funny. Yeah, uh, Kevin likes to uh, Kevin likes to rib for the Irishness. <laughs> he likes. To... How did, how did like you guys that. meet again? Or... Oh man, it, literally just in the depths of COVID, I was like, you know, I was like, just kind of talking to you. Like, obviously, I was talking to you guys, and then I just saw Kevin's Space Night stuff, and I was like, man, can I color one of your one of your pieces? Just oh, okay. I did a, a page from uh, Dio Tales of Space Nights, the most recent one. You yeah, released. yes. And um, but we like when I asked them, we were just kind of talking a bit, and then we just like kept talking, and then we um we just I don't know, we just kept talking for like months. <laughs> we just didn't stop. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, you know, we get along very well. We uh, we play some games together. So we haven't really had a chance, though, because I've been, I've been working a new job for, like, six months, and it's, like, takes up a huge chunk of my fucking brain space. So we haven't really... And he's been busy as well. He's so crazy busy with fucking Space Night shit. He's, oh, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, good. Have you got a copy of the newest one, actually? Tales of Space Nights? We did. Uh, we... um. We interviewed him Thursday for Gangster's Voice, but the uh, but the uh, uh, the video kept cutting out, and there was a there was a lag on my part. So it's it's a more of an audio podcast. You get to see okay. glimpses of of uh, yeah. Kevin's stuff because he was drawing page. Uh, he was drawing a page off of uh, Space Knights Two, which you could barely see on what I recorded. Yeah, I actually. I was awake yeah, I, at, like when you started and I listened to the first minute and there was some oh, audio okay. trouble and I was like, it's three in the morning over here. I was like, yeah. I should fucking glad I didn't because it'd be yeah, like seven think. by the time it ended. I didn't realize it actually recorded though. That's great. Yeah. That tales of the, the tales one. God, it was so, how good. I mean, like you look at this and you compare it to, to the first volume, the improvement, the growth yeah, that I he's know, done. Right? His shit is like, um, like, uh, oh, McMahon, what's the crack, buddy? Or he's in there too? Uh oh. You were talking about this shitty uh, stream Thursday. It's recorded, it's all up on YouTube now if you want to to mm. listen to I it. I will give that a listen for sure. That's that's great. Um, yeah, his, his fucking, he's leveling up like crazy, man. His fucking, his illustrations are insane. Kevin's like, leveling um, up so fast that he could redraw the first volume but you know he, he and don't he need would, to. oh yeah but <clears throat> what's my up man wishes to speak no i had to clear my throat but i didn't know if i had hit the uh, mute button quick enough so i said excuse speech me. speech speech <laughs> yeah do you have a do you have an address that you'd like to uh do you have a statement uh, yeah, are we off stream now can we do addresses uh, i'd like to take a minute to talk about um 
the upcoming grievance project. I think uh, if you don't, you know, you know, you were unilaterally decided to just change it to X. And it's, wait, it's wait, wait, hold on. Fantastic Four. Wait, wait, hold on. I didn't go to the Discord today. Wait, wait what's happening? <laughs> what have you guys done? <laughs> My sweet turtles. I want to. Uh, I want to speak on the most pressing issue in today's society: uh, cancel culture. Wait, yeah. do you want to be canceled? You or, have the floor. Or, do you want to cancel? No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I think I think it's you know it's a real problem. Where all of our brave. Oh, I don't know. I don't need to go with this. <laughs> I thought that would kill, to be honest. <laughs> Wait for the accolades to roll in. I need to bring up my soundboard. What are you What are you working on, Philip? Uh, I am uh, currently working on a uh, <clears throat> a little Max commission. Oh, cool! Yeah. I do you do many commissions? Huh? Do you do many commissions? No, nobody's nobody's interested. I'm, nobody knows. I bet many people would no, get Nobody knows. It, it, it says it on my Instagram. Yeah, but you're you're a. Push uh, I'll push that out. I'm following. I'm gonna push that out. Far smaller than it should be, to be honest. Yeah, and I kind of draw the pictures. I like to keep my followers low. Well, though you've actually grown, but. Yeah, I don't know why you don't. Um, you should have a fucking huge amount of followers, man. Yeah. Look, Erwin's doing his best, okay? But he can only give me so many followers at a time. I try. Where are my followers? If you're ready to do commissions, I'll push that out on my stories. Um, Jay, are the you posting, time. Quark? I'll share your huh? post. Don't I? I share your post, Quark. Yeah, you do. But yeah, you share like every post I make, but I only make a post once in the blue moon. So. <laughs> Philip's last post <laughs> was uh, backing the, the Kickstarter. <laughs> the problem with your page is that it uh, it looks like my page. Uh, it, you you seem way too chill, and like you know, I'm just it's like yeah, Saitama. You know, you're just a you're just a guy who's an artist for fun, but yeah. actually, the fucking. Stuff is so fantastic. Here's proof, uh, Quark. It looks uh, like you're just chill. I'm showing it on screen. I'm sharing your post on my story. Thank you. I'm sharing your post on my story right now, Quark. Let me know like what that does. Oh fuck. Okay, cool. Thanks, <laughs> gentlemen. I think you did that before, and I felt really bad because I was just like dicking around, and I was like, oh man. <laughs> I do appreciate that. That sound. <laughs> Yeah, I do it when I I do it when I want to. I I've gotten a few comments or a few uh, DMs about like, hey, can you show? Can you share my stuff on your stories? It's like, uh, only do it for yeah, stuff. Yeah, those that I want those hoes hoes are gonna clout chase, man. That's that's just that's just typical hoes. Oh, yeah. cool. Thanks, everyone. I'm gonna give that a little love heart. <laughs> there we go. So you're back on Instagram, man. Huh? Yeah, oh man, my fucking I, I thought I was I thought I was done with it for good, but uh I realized I was just under a huge amount of pressure and work and I like I, I it's kind of my my job is really, really hard. <laughs> and I was like, Oh fuck, I can't I can't uh I can't have anything else going on. But then yeah, I was just being a bitch. To quote Joe Rogan. When did you come back? Um, this week, I think like a couple of days ago. Oh, yeah. Right. I was only, I only had it gone for a couple of weeks. So I just like, I, I, I was kind of like, oh, what am I doing? Fucking doing drawings and shit. Like I'm fucking, you know, and then I like got rid of it. And then, uh, yeah, I just took it back. Cause I was like, it's actually stupid to fucking uh, shelve something it's a like quiz. that. So it's a coincidence um, too. Cause I posted up the, um, the, uh, the ink and drink, uh, comic book remix post. With everybody's name in it and i was able to tag quark in it yeah i i actually think i got a message like literally when i reset up my oh, oh, it's almost been two days ago i got a message from you literally when i reset up my thing and i was like oh a message from Irwin," and then i uh and then i saw it was that and i was like i shared it on my story but I must put it as a post but yeah i don't know i was just i was like my 
my yeah I, like oh, i don't know so i i don't want to start talking about my job because it's not interesting oh yeah to okay. anybody i'm still streaming too so you don't have to yeah, refill it's... but i will stop the stream right now thank you everybody for watching we'll see you next that uh next thursday bye